Hi, everyone. Welcome to another show. I'm going to get right into it. We have my guest, Nico LaHood, Christian apologist, former district attorney in San Antonio. Uh, has a great podcast right now called R-Rated Christianity. I got the links in the description below for the YouTube and the Facebook page. Go check it out. But we're going to get him on. We're not going to waste any time. I'm going to bring him on, and we're going to get into this, and we're going to find out a little bit about him. Nico, how you doing, buddy? I'm blessed, my man. Thank you for having me on. Oh, thank you for coming, man. It was short notice. I, I, I gave Nico like two or three days notice, and he was like, <laughs> yeah, no problem. He, he came through for me. So, yeah, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your podcast and how, and how you got into this. Yeah, you know, I'm a native of San Antonio. I've lived here all my life. I've had an interesting journey in my faith. I was born in a certain denomination. I don't want to rag on it. Even I'm not crazy about religion, so to speak, uh, but I have a strong relationship with Christ. But I grew up under a certain religion, and it kind of, you know, it screwed me up, to, to, to say the least. I mean, all these rules, but no relationship. I couldn't understand why the hell I was a Christian under this denomination, what the hell it meant. And, uh, and so that was that. I just, I didn't really uh, have a re uh, an understanding of, of why I was uh, a Christian or whatever it was. Ended up going through an interesting journey. Uh, was arrested for selling drugs at one point in my life, like a fool. Uh, went through the justice system, turned my life around. In the process of doing that, my brother was murdered in my driveway. And I'm giving you the cliff note version. Oh. During a botched carjacking, we walked out three minutes later. I helped load his body on the gurney after I picked up my mom off the floor, saw my pop cry for the very first time, washed his blood off my driveway with my with my pop. Um, that'll I mean, this just, I don't know how else to say it. I mean, that'll fuck you up. I mean, wow. it's just real. Absolutely. There's no, there's no other, there's no spiritual way to say that. It just will jack you up. I was angry, pissed off at God, what I thought I knew of God. Uh, I, I self diagnosed myself as a functioning anger holic. I never went to go see anybody because I was so angry. I didn't think I needed to. I was, you know, I was getting, you know, I was training, fighting, and getting into, you know, a lot of scrapes. Back then, I had a different mindset. And so it went through life uh, angry. I was stuck in the prism of rage and anger and unforgiveness, except I didn't know who to direct it to. Ultimately, those guys were caught, and, and I witnessed the execution of, of one of them, of the shooter. Um, at, at some point, I'd say 10 years into that, I, um, I got, as they say, sick and tired of being sick and tired. It just sucks being angry all the time. It takes more muscles to frown and mad dog people than it does to smile and just you know be yourself. And I, I, I practiced law. I still went through law school. I went through all my, my undergrad and um, ended up, um, what's wrong? And, and ended up, and then, sorry, my family was giving oh, me yeah. some tips on here. Where to look at, sorry. No I, don't, problem. I don't know where to look at. Um, <laughs> You're fine. And so uh, I was practicing law. But then I just, like I said, I mean, I, I, was, I was hitting a ceiling in my, in my opinion. I was a criminal defense attorney. Uh, people didn't think I would do that. They thought I'd go straight into prosecution because of what we went through. But I was passionately defending people that were accused of allegations. But like I said, I, I didn't have any meaningful relationships. There's a passage in scripture, Matthew 22, 36, amongst other ones, another one in Luke. It says, love the Lord your God with everything and then love your neighbor yourself. Well, shit, I didn't love myself. I was angry at myself. I had guilt ridden. I, I, you know, at the time my brother needed me the most in my life, I wasn't there for him. And so... Um, I didn't have any meaningful relationships. It was my way or the highway. And, and I knew at some point that I, I loved the idea of my children and they weren't born yet. I was dealing with people in the justice system that they had generations in prison. I, I, I remember one day I represented this guy that he was going to prison. He was going to go to prison because he was a habitual here in Texas, meaning that he has two prior trips to prison and he was facing another felony, 25 to life, literally. I ended up working on a deal for four years. He was overjoyed because he was wow. facing 25 to life. Oh, yeah. life. And, but, but what, I, what I learned about him was that his daddy was already in prison and his son was on his way to prison. I said, holy shit, man. I mean, you know, you can't give what you don't have. And then I thought about my grandpa on my mom's side. He passed away in jail. He had an issue with alcohol. His son, my Uncle Eddie, passed away in prison. He had an issue with heroin. His other son, my Uncle Louie, committed suicide. He had an issue with alcohol. And then my brother's murdered in my driveway. What do you do with that, you know? And so I just realized that, <clears throat> that my kids were not going to get the best version of me. I knew I loved the idea of them, even though I wasn't married. I didn't have any children, nothing like that. But I knew I had this idea. I, had this, I grew up, I'm half Lebanese, half Mexican. And so I had this really strong cultural family bonds, you know. Lebanese and Mexicans are really strong in, in their family unit. 
but I just didn't feel like I didn't have anything to give them. So this is going to sound arrogant to people that are of faith. And it's like, so I gave God a chance again. <laughs> what an idiot. Me, I was. And so I said, I'll give you a chance again. So I started researching my faith. But this time, uh, John Anthony, do you go by both John Anthony or John? Just John's fine. Yeah. Oh, John. But this time I asked questions as a lawyer. I asked the why questions. And why those 66 books? What about Genesis? What about science? How old is the earth? All this fucking bull. I mean, I asked tough questions from... From what about the Gnostic Gospels? What about the Dead Sea Scrolls? What about the Council of Nicene and the Council of Trent, the Council of Ephesus, the Council of Estradon? Why these books? And what about the, the Jesus Bang Mary? I mean, I was, I mean, I asked everything, man. I was really just into this, this, because I had to know. I mean, it wasn't, I didn't want some, I didn't want some person to tell me it's not a faith. It's not my faith if somebody's telling me what to believe. Yeah. And so I just went deep into it, brother. I mean, I really, I needed to, because here's the deal. If Christianity's true, then it changes everything, right? I mean, it changes everything. Yeah. If it's not true, then shit, it's just like any other worldview, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, Shintoism, atheist, agnostic, whatever the shit. I mean, it's all the same. I mean, except just with a different flavor. And I thought to myself, well, then, and then I just went into science and went and really studied Genesis with a friend of mine, that guy George is on the podcast with me. This was 12 years. Well, I started my journey 16 years ago, but then George and I have been friends, dear friends for 12 years. And I just, and when I came to a conclusion, because John, I studied the, the crucifixion. Now, remember, I study murder scenes for a living. As a prosecutor, a former prosecutor, and as a defense attorney. And the most famous, in my opinion, the most famous murder scene in the history of mankind was the murder of a first century Jew named Yeshua, Jesus Christ. I mean, his name, Yeshua is his original name, it's Jesus, but in translation. But and it was a murder scene. I mean, even atheist scholars will tell you that this first century Jew got taken out by the Romans in a brutal way. I mean, so then I started studying extra biblical works like, you know, the Lucian and Suetonius and Plenar the Younger and Joseph, Josephus and Phlegon. These are guys, they're not, these aren't Christians. These are extra biblical people. They're talking, then I read, what about Horus and Osiris and, 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 and Plethora and all these other, you know, Persian gods, is Jesus a copycat god? What about that the Egyptian shit with I, you know, I, I, Horus and all that? And so I, I looked into that kind of stuff as well. And I, and, and I, I looked at the timing of it. Um, I, I studied evolution. I, I mean, I just studied a lot of stuff in Darwin and where he came up with it, what his ideas. And, you know, he's uh, studying the, the, the finches and, you know, and Galapagos. And I, 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 what was his ideology? And, why was he such a staunch, you know, atheist at some point? You know, he used to study. He was studying to be a, a man of faith. He was. He grew up in a religious uh, environment, uh, but his daughter passed away, you know. And so I, I looked at all these things. I look at motives for living as well, right? So I studied the, the, the crucifixion. I studied all this other stuff. It was a really, as you can tell, pretty deep journey. It wasn't the typical mm -hmm. kumbaya bullshit that Christians walk into and then they're told something. They have an experience, which an experience is wonderful. But an experience is no different than somebody else's experience in another worldview. And so I just okay. said, man, we can't all be right. I mean, some, either we're all wrong or somebody's right. But we can't all be right. I mean, Christianity can't be right. Islam can't be right and Christianity can't be right. Hindu and Buddhism can't be right if Christianity and Islam are right. I mean, and, 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 and Taoism, I mean, that, that can't be right. And Shintoism, though, that can't be right. Zikism, that can't be right then if everybody else is right. So, I mean, it was this, it was deal of this, this law of non-contradiction and logical consistency. And does, does it make right. logical sense? Is it logically consistent? And does it contradict itself like Aristotle said? And so I, that was kind of my journey. And then I, there were some other apologists that before me that were former atheists. And I really would, I really would, not that I, I had never considered myself an atheist. Because you can't be pissed off at something that's not there, right? And I was pissed off at God. True, so I mean, true. And so, you know, Josh McDowell was a former atheist. Um, Lee Strobel was a former atheist. And there was a number of these guys that I, because I, I wanted to talk to, I wanted to, I wanted to listen to those guys, you know, Jim Warner Wallace was a former atheist. He was a cold case detective as well. That hit my mind work is as a lawyer. And so I just, that, that was kind of my journey, John, you know, and, and, and then I got to a conclusion where like, shit, man, this is real. I mean, I knew Jesus was, was a historical figure, but so is Napoleon, right? I mean, so it doesn't mean that he is God. And you, so there's, there's a couple of questions that you have to ask yourself. Number one, do you believe in intelligent design or natural selection through random mutation, right? You have to ask yourself that, okay? If there's an intelligent designer, that's just the first question. 
Well, now let's try to name that designer. Is it the designer of Islam, even though Islam's not claiming to design it? Is it a Hindu, Buddhist? Has it always been there? What the hell happened? And, you know, I studied the Big Bang Theory, which sounds a lot like Genesis 1. You know, a lot of Christians lose their shit over, over the Big Bang Theory and over science and an old earth. And they're just wrong. I mean, they're just wrong. I mean, there's, they, they act goofy and they, be, they get treated as such. I'm you hard on Christians, John. You, 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 the podcast. You, don't, you, don't, you do accept the old earth or you don't? I'm an old earth guy. I okay. believe, that, I believe okay. the universe is 14.3 billion years old and the earth is somewhere between 3.8 okay. and 4.3 billion years old. Well, yeah, and I mean, nothing, and there's nothing in scripture that contradicts that. No, no, I mean, I'm perfectly, uh, I mean, there's plenty of uh, of theists who accept old earth and evolution and yeah, lots of things, but yeah, that so, uh, all those, yeah, you know, that's all that's great. I, I, I could, we, we could delve into any one of those topics you gave, yeah. but that's a great, yeah, but just um, to make it clear, and we can talk about mm-hmm. this at another time. I'm yeah. not an evolutionist, but I'm not a I'm not a young earther. See, the, the, a lot of these Christians they, they get all you know their panties in a wad because because they think that if you're an old earther that you have to believe in evolution, and so I'm just I'm just I want to leave it. We, we can talk about it if you want to or whatever. And I mean, I, I, I came to explosion. and I looked at all that stuff. So I, I've yeah, of course that's one of the the big sticking points between sometimes between atheists and Christians is the evolution sure. topic. Sure, but the thing is with me, it's like I've. I'm an idiot when it comes to stuff like that. I don't have any background in science. I don't have any, you know, so I couldn't even have a, a really a intelligent conversation about that if I wanted to. Right. But yeah, so I mean, I, I like to get into more of, um, of course, I'm an idiot in this too, but I like to get into more of the philosophy of things. And, uh, but let, but do, but real quick, I want to talk about uh, your, your podcast that you do with sure. uh, your friend George, R rated Christianity. That's yeah. what, that, that is, that is the, Title that caught my eye. I was on Facebook and I saw that. I was like, I have to know what this is, because <laughs> I have to see what. And, and it li- and it literally was exactly almost what I expected. Because yeah, it's, it's like y'all y'all are definitely you're not afraid to use some colorful language that most Christians wouldn't. And so just take us through how that started a little, just real quick. It's like tell us how y'all got that idea and kind of what motivated you to start such a such a different form of Christian apologetics. Well, you know, I because because Jesus is authentic. As I started studying that first century Jew, in Matthew 23, he used some colorful language to the Pharisees. These are the religious people. That was one of the religious class, the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees. In Matthew 23, I know he gets all Christians all jacked up, you know, but he uses some slang words. I mean, first of all, English wasn't developed back then, right? When Matthew was writing in, 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 in Ephesians and all these other books in the Bible, and they try to misuse scripture and unwholesome words. What does that mean? Well, English wasn't developed back then. So why don't you use the original language, Greek in the New Testament, Hebrew in the Old Testament, find out what they meant, not what you want it to mean. And so it's just, it's slang. I mean, how goofy do we get? And so Jesus used some strong language. He kicked some ass in the temple. I mean, he pissed off everybody, really, when you think about it. The people that were too lost and doing whatever the hell they want, he pulled them in and said, look, you can't live your life and do whatever the hell you want to do. The woman at the well, I mean, she's banging all these guys and he meets her where she's at and tells her the truth and then tells her if you knew who you're drinking from, you would never thirst anymore. And then said, now go and sin no more. And she freaked out because he told her everything about her escapades and all this shit. And, and so I just, I just want people to know that, you know, to be authentic. A lot of people are turned off from Christianity because number one, Christians don't do their homework and they don't study. And 2 Timothy 2.15 says to properly handle the word of truth and they don't properly handle the word of truth. And so they're there uh, 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 and they're studying because then they read the Bible. They don't study the Bible. And then they put on a show. They're like checking off the boxes and trying to out kumbaya each other. And, you know, no disrespect. They put the fish on the back of their car instead of having a fish on their heart and living out their life that way. And I just said, fuck that, man. I'm going to be all raw. I'm going to be real with people. And so I was and, and because Jesus was. I mean, think about it. He pissed off the religious people of the time. All the, re- okay. the religious people are who killed him, right? And he let them, but still, those are the ones that wanted him not, they were off him. And so I just said, you know what? You're not going to get a fake Nico. I've never been that way. You can ask anybody, if you follow my career in politics, when I was a district attorney, when I ran for office, and when I was actually the elected DA, I was just, what you see is what you get. Now, of course, if I'm in court or if I'm in a certain setting, you usually, yeah. that's where Ephesians 429 comes in. You consider your audience. When I'm doing prison ministry, guess what? They don't give a shit if I use, you know, the F-bomb. When I'm preaching in church, because I've had the, the privilege and the honor of preaching in a number of churches, the only F word coming out of my mouth is forgive, right? Because I'm considering my audience. When I'm on R-rated Christianity, it's kind of in between. I don't drop many F-bombs there. But, but 
So it can or can't be. But some of these Christians act like, oh, I don't do fake ass Christian. Read some of the comments. You're, well, they don't say fake ass, God forbid. But I mean, you know, they, they say you fake yeah. Christian because you, you, you curse. Well, first of all, I'm not cursing. I'm, I'm cussing. I'm not cursing. Cursing is completely different. Scripture talks about cursing. If right. I were to tell someone, John, I hope you get cancer. I hope you divorce your wife. I hope your kids die. That's a curse. The power of life and death, Proverbs says, is in the tongue. And so you either speak life or death over people. Scripture's clear. James 3, Ephesians 4, 29. It's all over the place where cursing is never accepted. Uh, first of all, I don't use the Lord's name in vain. Number one, that's blasphemy. I, I use everything else. But that's the only bad word to me is the Lord's name in vain. But but cursing is not acceptable. Even some of my political opponents and people that I, that if they signed a waiver, I'd beat the shit out of them if they wanted to. Um, but now I pray for them. But, but you know, I don't even curse them. I pray for them. It's so hard, John. I mean, you have to imagine people, they'd lie about me and have done all this stuff. I have to, I'm, I'm supposed to be obedient and pray for them. And so I do. That's a um, so, so, so I wanted to start a podcast where there was no, there was no bullshit. If you heard me speaking at a, at, a, at a restaurant for lunch or you were talking to me offline, you're going to get the same Nico. Again, with wisdom, with considering my audience and using some common sense. That, that's what the scriptures make sense to me. They're just so practical. And so I, I just I said, so I was in the garage working out one night and I said, what are we going to call this? I definitely don't want to call it the Nico LaHood show. That's everybody does that shit, right? It's always about me, 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 me. I said, no, it's not about me. And I said, I want to, and, and then I was, I want to be real. I want to be raw. And then I said, man, I'll read a Christianity. And I said, need one more. And then redemption. I mean, the whole Christian faith is about redemption, right? Re redeeming my broken ass and my, all my flaws and my, my sinful nature and have this eternal gift of a real, raw, and redemptive. So the R stands for real, raw, and redemptive, right? Okay. So the real and the raw, are, it speaks for itself. We're going to talk about real topics. We're going to do it in a raw way. We're not going to kumbaya people. And it leads to a redemptive relationship with that first century Jew and Jesus Christ. And so that was it. And then we, I just said, let's use the same thing. And we just put it together. Literally, it was one of those, I, I think it was a divine intervention moment. But, and it just stuck. And then we had some people say, I don't know, man, maybe you shouldn't. I was like, well, I'm not asking your opinion. I'm just telling you what we're going to do. Because I believe that, you know, that, that the Lord, you know, really prompted me in that and put that on my heart. Because it was just like that, John. And so that's it. And we, we, we and so we get it from Christians too, brother. Trust me, all these religious. Well, I, was, I definitely, uh, I grew, I grew up like in Christianity. I was, I was raised Catholic and eventually became like evangelical through, you know, ports of uh, teenage high school years, even served as a youth minister at one point. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah. So I, I definitely know what you mean. Like this, this brand of Christian apologetics would not be very well received. I can tell you that as far, for, for most people that, that, you know, I remember coming in contact with, but like I said, that's, that's exactly what kind of caught my eye. And, you know, as far as into your end, I hope it does the same thing for y'all. I hope y'all, you know, bring some people in and you can, you can get some attention and, you know, uh, uh, grow, grow well, your yeah, channel. You know, right? I don't want, I don't want the attention. I want Christ to have the attention, you know, well, but, yeah. I mean, and I won't take up your time because you're asking me questions, but shit, I'm no, no, no. Go ahead. Go I'm ahead. fascinated why you left the Christian faith, especially as a youth minister, a pastor, you know, kind of a facilitator to youth, which is a huge uh, responsibility. Well, I mean, I, 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 I didn't become an atheist while I was a youth minister. Okay. So that, that was right. Well, that was years. It was years later. I, I had stopped being a youth minister, and years. This was years later that I eventually, uh, guess, came to identify as an atheist. Hmm. And that was through many different things. Mainly, it was the idea that it was at the, at the end of the day, it was I didn't see good reason for what to to believe a God exists. Hmm. Okay. But I I do want to get into the uh, and and we we can get into more of this too. Uh, we we can kind of get into that. But uh, a couple of your episodes that you know uh, a few recent ones, you've covered things that most Christian podcasts don't cover. You'll agree. You, we've got uh, one was gender fluidity. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm looking at a couple of uh, the uh, pedophilia, different things like that. Yeah. So, and, th and this is something I thought about. We, one of the things that when I was a Christian and, and, uh, and it is fairly prominent in most Christian denominations is this idea that, that about, a about where morality comes from, what it is, and what constitutes something being immoral. Mm -hmm. So, as a Christian, I'm sure you, you do. You think that morality is based in God? 
God's nature. Yeah, because here's the deal. Uh, for me, think about me. If someone says, hey, man, John, don't don't steal my shit. Why? Because, number one, it's mine. Who says it's yours? I do. I bought it, asshole. And, and two, there's a statute. There's a Texas statute that says do not steal, do not commit theft. I mean, stealing is the kind of the layman's term translation. Well, then, so when we get into this moral, it's interesting. I mean, I, and, and I say this respectfully, John. But I think the atheist and the, the the atheist really runs into a problem when you think about okay, what's the definition of right and wrong? Because everyone has to answer four questions: origin, morality, meaning, and destiny. Origin: How did we get here? Morality: What's the defi definition of right and wrong? Meaning: What the hell are we here for? What's the purpose of our life? You know why we do things, and then destiny: Where do we go from here? All four of those, everybody has to answer those questions, and they have to do it cohesively and coherently. It's got to make sense. I you can't just fly off. We we can we 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 may we may wonder about those questions. I don't know that we necessarily have to answer them. Well, I mean, I think look, because I mean, let me tell you what Christians do. Christians take on this piñata mentality. You know what a piñata is? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. you know, I wouldn't want to assume anything. Piñata, you know, hit this piñata. Right. Right? So Christians take on this piñata mentality where we take all these hits and this punching bags, and everybody punches at us, and we just take it. Uh, and then this like this perfect performance standard. Oh, you don't have the question. Ah, Christianity's false, you stupid ass. I told you. Well, hold on, which because I don't have the answer, doesn't. Oh no, I, yeah, I don't agree answer, to that. Yeah, but a yeah. lot of people take on that but, mentality. And same with the reverse too. Would you agree? On um, which way? Which reverse? Like, if, if an atheist can't answer a question, that doesn't mean there is a god. Well, or, no, no, oh, yeah, that on yeah. itself is not doesn't mean there's a god. Right. But what I'm saying is, is it's it's one thing to question and say something's wrong, like Christianity's wrong, but then you got to replace it with something. Well, then what's right? See, that's the only part where I'm going to challenge, push back a little bit. If we're wrong, then what's right? Well, I don't think I said Christianity. Right. I don't think I, I, mean, I don't think I said Christian. See, when I say wrong, I don't. I don't know that. I, I think we're, we're talking about morality, and we're talking about Christianity being wrong. I think when I say Christianity, if, if I were to say Christianity is wrong, I didn't say that. But if, if I were to say Christianity sure. is wrong, I would say I would. I would be more likely to say I haven't seen reason to believe it's true. Mm. Not necessarily that I'm flat out asserting that it is false. Got it. So, so do, you, do you think you're more agnostic now? Do you believe there's well, something I, out there? I, I, I don't. I, I, I don't think I'm agnostic because I actually believe God doesn't exist. Okay, fair enough. I don't, I don't claim to. I don't claim to say. I don't claim to make this this blanket statement that God does not exist and that is just a fact. Got it. But to the extent that I can believe, to the extent that I have the information, the relevant information, my belief is that God doesn't exist. Got it. So. You know, anybody well, making a blanket statement about God does not exist to me is sort of making a statement they can't they can't back up. Well, here's the deal. So you, you mentioned morality because that always runs into a problem. Mm -hmm. So I'll ask you this question. Is it wrong to murder a six month old child because they won't stop crying? Bash their head against the wall, which I've seen many times when I was a dealer. I, I personally think it is. Why? Because I think because. When I when I say what's wrong, I'm talking about that's causing harm, or is, that's is that causing the standard any harm at all. I mean, any harm. No, well, that's specifically or, for the six month old. Right. Right. Well, I'm saying it's causing unnecessary harm. It's causing suffering. You know, it's causing. Uh, and it, it, like I said, I I personally think that morality is is just is really an opinion. When I say something's immoral, I'm expressing my opinion about it. And I think that I I think that tends to be be what we see from everyone is when well, someone I guess, says, I guess my point is, so, so when I ask many people, is it wrong to bash a six month baby, old baby against the wall for crying too, for any reason really, but I mean, for crying too much, I got to give them an instigator. They say, yes, they go, why? Well, because it's just wrong. I go, why is it wrong? I mean, tell me why it's wrong. Well, no, I, I, mean, I, would, I, would, I would say it but, because it causes harm. That's my opinion. Okay. Well, but, but, but if, 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 if we're no different than animals, Right. Because, I mean, if we're all the same, we're all from the same single cell organism and mosorial soup, this kind of soup of cells that they developed, then the lion, does the lion commit murder when he kills the zebra? Well, I don't think I don't think the, I don't think it's murder because murder is def, it's like it's a legal term. It's a human construct. I will. Uh, I, I got that. But what I'm saying is, 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 is that when I'm, I'm trying to delve down. Is the lion immoral? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Is, is the lion immoral? I. I don't, I don't, I don't see it as immoral. It's my opinion because I don't see the lion as having the capacity to reason morality. But, but, but who gave us the reasoning for morality? How did it get there with us? 
how do you I'm basically not to right? Just, no, no, no. I say questions. That right. I it's to yeah. So the fact that we have a mind that is capable of reason, or that we our brain produces these things that are these thoughts, and we're capable of you know abstract and complex thought, isn't stuff I, I I couldn't tell you this is where it came from. Mm. I have my suspicions, but the. But the fact that we can do it is different from how it came about. Well, but but it, it speaks to the designer, right? If, if there is a designer, because because let me like as you may remember and you know probably, uh, what we, we believe is all people, all creation, all humans have the imago dei, the image of God, because in Genesis one it says, "Let us make man into our image." So that makes it our relationships are godlike. Our, our nature, our, our protectiveness. I don't know if you have children or not, John, but right. we have this this fatherly and for women motherly relationships with our children. We can reason and we have a conscience and we can we can decipher the right and wrong based off a standard that we're given to by God. And so that's what makes us different than animals. I've heard other atheists, maybe not you, say that we're no different than animals. Richard Hawkins and Dawkins, I'm sorry, and others, Hitchens and them to say, we're no different. We all came from the single cell organism. And we just, for whatever reason, we developed this way over millions of years. And it's like, well, we have information. Information, there's always intelligence behind information. No one would ever think that the Ferrari just made itself because, it, you know, 14 tornadoes ran through it over a thousand years. I mean, that's complex. And we're more complex than that. You know, you know that our DNA, if we're going to hand write out our DNA, it's got three billion letters plus. I mean, like 4,000 more letters than the Bible has. And the Bible has, what, over 740,000 letters in it? Over this, over the sixty-six books. I mean, it's mind-boggling to me that that's so much specificity. All I'm saying is, gives me the evidence that there's a designer. Like, like right now, I'm using a laptop that I'm communicating with you in Florida, and I can see you clearly. I can hear you clearly. It, to me, it's fascinating. This stupid little phone, I can communicate with the whole world over this damn thing, and it just—it's fascinating to me. Well, no one would think that these things just develop themselves. There's there's intelligence behind information. Well, and these 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 machines have the most information in any created anything out there, machine or, or animal or human. Well, when we call when we call the things that make us us information, we, we are using an analogy. Mm -hmm. This because these are chemicals. What are chemicals? The, what make what make people? Chemicals, like what, just chemicals? There's DNA. No, there's no nerves, DNA. Yeah, there's well, DNA. DNA is chemicals. Right. Okay. So when, when we, there, there's a, there's the, there's the Paleo's watchmaker analogy. You know, yeah. if you're walking on, you've, you've heard that, I, I'm sure. So when, so when I hear, you know, this is complex and this is, you know, and we're so much more complex than this. I, I, I get the feeling that, like I said, it's, it's, we can sit here and talk about, the teleological oh, yeah, yeah, side I of it. I know you're calling about the podcast. Yeah, I, I, lo I love the, I love the morality argument though, mm -hmm. because that's kind of what the, when, when I when I watch some of your shows, a lot of those seem to boil down to that. Mm -hmm. And like I said we have we, this idea of we have a mind and we why we're able to make moral assessments. You, we, we don't see we said so we don't see other animals making moral assessments to the extent that we do. You know, well, the, at all, right? So like well, some some. Example. Of the so, lion and the zebra. If you and I are lions, I say, hey, John, look at that zebra over there. I say, no, hold on, Nico. That's someone's mom or someone's wife or someone's daughter. Give a shit. I'm hungry. Let's go. Come on. We go eat the, the zebra. There's not a moral compass in, in the jungles. And so well, we are different than that. We, we are separate. We're above that. You know. They do know that if they don't eat the zebra, they will die. Well, that's, that's survival of the fittest, right? That's well, it's just survival. I don't know the survival of the fittest. It's, it's survival. Well, I mean, the fittest meaning that the lion... The lion's going to eat the zebra if the zebra, zebra can't kick his ass or run faster than him. So it's the fittest. I mean, that's well, the, the, lion's, the lion finds itself in an environment where it has to eat and the zebra is easy to eat. And that's that's how it propagates its species. So, but I mean, as far as, okay, the fact that we have, it, it takes a human mind to even have a concept of morality. If humans ex didn't exist, we wouldn't, morality would not exist in my opinion. But because we're the we're the we're the only ones who really have a concept of morality. But you don't think it's important to figure out how that got there like that? Well, how how it got? I mean, I, I have my suspicions. I I believe it's an evolutionary characteristic. Okay. But that's like I said, I'm not a scientist, not a biologist. I couldn't Got take it. you through all that. Okay. But the the fact that a lot of times, like you said, your example with the uh, you know hurting a child for no reason or because it's crying. 
for any reason, but yeah. Right, for any reason, yes. Yeah, so the majority of humans, I, I take back my previous statement where I said if humans were went away, there'd be no morality because we, we do see moral characteristics in chimps and things like that. That's been observed. But as far as human morality goes, Chimps are vicious with each other, brother. You know that. Sometimes, sometimes, yeah. They beat the fuck out. Yeah, so they're, they're not. I, mean, I was saying they're not as advanced. Like, yeah, I said. Yeah, yeah I was saying their, their concept is not the, the exact yeah. same as ours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we we do recognize that we are on this higher level of thought. Yeah. As far as animals go, as if you want to call humans animals, like you said, you, you said you didn't really agree with that. But as far as living things, humans find ourselves on this higher tier of thought. We're able to think abstractly, think about things like morality and love and things like that. The fact that we have we share a lot of these moral principles mm -hmm. isn't really surprising to me. And it seems that Christians really put a great deal of stock in questions like you just asked. Like, if if I ask this question, why is it wrong to hurt a child? Everyone's going to say it's it's wrong but they don't really know why it's wrong because it's just, it's ingrained in us. Yeah, but we know it's wrong because the Canaanites didn't think it was wrong. You know why that's, everybody thinks, oh, God's so, such a bastard. Why did he take out the Canaanites? Well, man, they were, they were putting babies at the altar, right? They were burning them alive on this molten, the Spartans, if the baby wasn't born exactly perfect, they used to discard babies. So, so you can't really say that every okay. generation and every person. Well, no, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that every, every person thinks that everything that, Everything is wrong equally. Yeah. Like I, said, I, I think that morality is more of an opinion. And a lot well, of then, people... Then think, we get back to survival of the fittest. Because if it's my opinion that I want your shit, and you think that we, we got to fight it out for you to stop me. Well, it, it, in, in the absence of a society, we would. Right, right. So, because society is going to get together and say, hey, uh, what, kind of, what kind of society do we want? Do we want a society where people have to fight over possessions just to keep them? Or we want a society where... People who try to take other possessions, we, we, we cast them out or we, we you know we, we ostracize them or we punish them in some way to deter them from doing it. Mm -hmm. So that, that's that's where that the fact that we have things that overlap isn't surprising because I was thinking about this a couple of days ago. Someone else asked me a similar question. Why is it that we all seem to find pretty much the same things wrong? Yeah. Like in your example, we, we would most people would call that wrong. So you could ask that to a hundred people and probably a hundred people are going to say it's wrong. So you probably have to ask a million people before you actually find one person that say it's not wrong. Well, yeah. Well, Cause look at the pedophilia stuff, the pedophilia things though. Right. And I, I do right, want to yeah. get into that. Yeah. Because there was, because I think for the, for the most, for the most part of that, I agree with you. There were some nuanced things that I kind of, just, I would have said differently, but this idea that we, we do have diff we, we have, pretty much the same uh, same views on morality is no different than we pretty much have the same views on what tastes good, what foods are good. Like the fact that we find killing people or causing suffering wrong is to me no different than the reason we don't find like boxes of cat turds on the food aisle because no one wants to eat that. See, I don't think those are even close to the same. I mean, murdering somebody, ending a life, ch to cutting off potential – Taking away someone's loved one, I mean, is nowhere. There's nothing close to I me. Mean, my brother being murdered, obviously. Right. Just understanding scripture. I mean, understanding that in Exodus, thou shall not kill. People screw that up. It's thou shall not murder. Proverbs six sixteen says God hates. One of the six things He hates is the spilling of innocent blood, not blood. Because I mean, you know, self defense, defense of third person, war time. I mean, killing is, is is killing. Murder is murder. Ecclesiastes 3 says there's a time for everything under the sun and then goes through a bunch of things, a time to cry, time to laugh, time to mourn, time to die, time to live, and a time to kill, but never a time to murder. So I look for the consistency there. So I put that murder, that that taking away of life, and murder me described as, as homicide, meaning the killing of innocent life without justified. So if someone busts in a door and you and I are in a room together and says, you some bitches on this podcast, you're dying, I draw my weapon and I go to town, I you know, center mass, shoot the fuck out of them. He goes, that's not murder. That's a killing, but it's self-defense, self the third person, self-defense, things of this nature. So I don't put that. That's my point about, about animals and us and the Imago Dei and the consciousness and that we are, you know, exceptional. Humans are exceptional, and that's why we're protected. 
And that goes right into a biblical worldview of, of, of the image of God in us, in all of us. Now, I'm not saying we're all his children because it takes, as you know, Romans 8, 14, we have to make a commitment to him and be adopted into his family. But we are all his creations with the wonderful p potential that he put inside us that's very unique. So would, that's would where you I'm gonna, you know, that's why I, yeah. I say that I don't put those in the same deal with the, the aisle and the cat food and, and murder. Would, would you say that the morality kind of almost goes to intent more than it does anything then? I, I, morality goes to a standard. I mean, wh why, and, and, and answer this for me, why does an atheist, and I, and I, I you know, I, I say this respectfully, I oh, yeah. this oh, yeah. by the way, John, why does an atheist get upset when their spouse cheats on them? Uh, I don't. I don't know if all atheists would get upset. Okay, that that, that, that would be a fair standard because I, mean, I can speak for myself. I, I can't really speak for anybody else. Yeah, yeah. I I, I, I just asked. I, I guess be, maybe it's the way my mind thinks. I have to go back to a source because if we get to a world where everyone's making up their own rules, then it truly turns into a jungle. I got. We have a society right now. And we can talk about where our society got their idea behind our laws. And our laws really are very biblically based, as you know, because of the Judeo-Christian influence in there. But aside from that, I'm just talking about in our, in, our, in, our, in our courts of public opinion, in society as we go forward, not in the justice system. I mean, what makes adultery wrong? What makes murdering a child wrong? What makes stealing wrong? Aside from the penal code, what makes bearing false witness wrong. So if I go up to John, I, I, I go around, I, I, I say that you're some, some, you know, pedophilia, thieving, backstabbing piece of dog shit. And I start lying about you because I want what you have, whatever it is. I want your podcast. I want your business. I want your, your wife. I don't know if you're married, whatever I want. Why is bearing false witness wrong? Because everybody would agree that's wrong. Matter of fact, we have you know, when you talk about with, with the person, standard. with the person doing it, with the person doing it, agree it's wrong. Well, the person doing it doesn't give a shit if they know it's wrong or not. They're doing it, right? I mean, they're so doing then, it. I mean, most people know that stealing is wrong, but they don't care. I mean, they're moral compass. They don't have those standards. They don't adhere and submit to those standards. So they're going to do what they want. They're making up their own rules. I would say most people think stealing is wrong. But why? Because they could put themselves in the position of the other person. But why does that matter? Why does that? Why is that important? I mean, who cares, right? I mean, just like whoever can, it's, if it's truly survival of the fittest, then what does it matter? I mean, like why? Why that rule? Where does that come from? Because in some societies, like in under Sharia law and under Islam, you can beat a woman for insubordination. If she doesn't listen to you, you beat her up. You can you can you can abuse her to to a degree. And I know there's different arguments under the Hadith and this of what they can do. If you steal, they chop off your hand. Is that justice? If someone steals bread, they can chop off your hand. That's kind of extreme. I mean, they throw well, gays off of buildings. You know, would they and, think would they think that if they if they didn't have the the religion telling them that it was okay? I don't know. I can't. I can't say that. But the, without so that's, that standard, that's the point. without that, without any standard, it, nothing's wrong. Is my point. If, if if there's not a standard, John, this is this my I guess my advocacy point. Without a standard, then nothing's wrong. You know, someone going after someone's wife, someone murdering somebody, taking their business, lying about them just for shits and grins. OK, if if I if I take something from you mm -hmm. and you don't care. Well, I mean, if you, if you take a pencil from me, I'm not going to care. I'm saying if I take, yeah, if, if I if I steal something from you and you don't care one bit. Have I done something wrong? It depends on. Yes. You in my opinion, you have. Why? Because I believe thou shalt not steal. I believe in a biblical worldview. It's not yours. You're coveting. You're wanting something that I have. And then you're doing something, whether you deceive me or not. Well, if I don't know about it and I find out later on, you deceived me. So deception is wrong. Uh, it's just a line. I mean, you know, we want to be truthful. We advocate truth. Why? Be for me, because the biblical God hates deception. That goes back to Proverbs 6.16. His character is one of love, truth, and justice. Those are the three main characteristics of God. And you don't get justice without truth. And you really don't get justice without some form of love because you want to right a wrong. So there takes love in that. So those three characteristics of God really make up that, that, that trifecta of how a society moves forward. Okay, so I've heard this analogy used before too. You say it's wrong to take something that's, that's not yours. So we're walking down the street and we see a uh, guy having a heart attack. Right next to us is a uh, drugstore, and in the window is a defibrillator. Okay. I, I have to. I do I break the window to get the defibrillator to save the man, or do I let him die because it's wrong to steal? 
Assuming you know how to use the defibrillator, like well, you right. didn't steal because you're going to use it and give it back, right? So you didn't steal it. Well, I've broken the window. Yeah. Well, then I'm again. You, again what you're doing, John, is, is taking that extreme situation to make the standard for everything, and that's fine. That that would not be stealing because when you look at the intent in the law, it's called mens rea. Right. So it's the there's intent. There's an exigent circumstance. I'm not trying to get legal with you, but I'm just going to. Oh tell yeah. You. There's an exigent circumstance. So taking someone's life is an exigent circumstance, but. If it's justified because you're trying to take someone else's life or my life or whatever, well, then it's not it's not murder. It's not wrong. It's self defense. So murder's wrong, but God gives exceptions for killing when when it's when it's appropriate. Self defense, war, whatever it is that this nature. So your example about the defibrillator, you're, I'm assuming you're not going to take it home. It's like I'm glad this guy was dying of a heart attack. So I always wanted that defibrillator. Now I have an excuse <laughs> for it. No, you had an exigent circumstance. You know, you're going to break the window. You're going to help him, and right, then you're probably so, going to get it back. So it's the intent that matters. No, but also circumstance matters. Yes, it's the intent, but the circumstance. Well, the intent the under standard. the circumstances, right? The intent here's, under the circumstance. So here's the standard. Let's use the most extreme. Taking innocent life is murder. That's always wrong. Now, but not every killing is a murder, right? I mean, not every killing right. is a murder. Right. And so you start with the standard, and then you work your way down depend, depending on the circumstance. Right. Let's so, say I was, I was cleaning a gun, and I was I was reckless about it. And I wasn't indexing my finger and, 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 and I, I didn't clear the chamber and I didn't take the magazine out and I'm really careless. And then I go, boom, and I shoot the weapon and then it, someone passes away. Well, that's not murder. It's reckless as shit. I'm still going to probably get charged with manslaughter, but it's not murder. Did you see my point? So well, we, re we recognize intent. You look at the circumstance and then you look at the mens rea of the intent. So that's right. the way it goes. And that's, and that's kind of what I, what, why I brought that up earlier is because I, I said I – I think that the morality of the situation is dictated or the morality of, a, of an action is dictated by the situation. But, 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 but I'm taking it a step further because there has to be a standard. There Does has there? to be a standard that, 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 that helps you dictate the circumstances and looks at your intent. Because if there's no standard, it doesn't matter about the circumstances. If, so it's if, never, if it's never wrong to break a pencil, then who cares if you break pencils? I mean, if, if, if breaking pencils or breaking toothpicks, I'm, I'm trying to give you some benign example. Right. If, 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 if there's no standard that, hey, don't break those toothpicks, that, then you can break all the toothpicks you want. You know, there, 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 there's no law against farting. How about that? Well, you're not going to, you know, because we, we, we well, I think I think to that extent, we recognize the difference between a human and a toothpick. One's sentient and one isn't. One can be replaced easily. One can't. But at why? All. I mean, because of the Imago Dei in that human being, because of the consciousness, because we are. Well, that's, that's, yeah, we're talking about the ontology there. It's like, yeah. it's, uh, like I said, I, I can't give you the why we we all seem to agree but i don't know a way to tell the difference between a god being the standard and us all just agreeing mm. yeah because, because societies haven't always agreed stalin didn't agree with you well that's now, why i think we don't that's why i think well that's why i think there is no standard because if there if there was a standard like you say wouldn't we all agree no there's a standard it doesn't mean that everybody's going to submit to that standard and there's consequences to that I mean, look at our, look at our society. There's a standard on murder, rape, stealing. I mean, you know, bearing, you know, all that. There's a lot of standards now. Whether you want to agree to that standard or not, you you can or can't. And if you don't, there's consequences. I always tell people you can pick your choices, but you can't pick your consequences. And so, if you don't agree to those standards, you will face consequences on Earth in the justice system at some point. So, what we say as Christians, and what you used to say as a Christian, was there's a moral standard that helped influence the standard on Earth. And at some point, we're going to have to answer for that because let me tell you, John, what I always tell people. And I've spoken when I was DA, I spoke to all kinds of groups and, you know, being involved in apologetics and just speaking about worldviews and challenging people to critically think. And I'm Republican, Democrat, whatever the shit. I said, you know what? The, the only thing we all have in common is one thing. All of us, John, all of us have one thing in common. At least we're all going to die. Right. We're, we're all yep. going to leave this earth for Christians. Yep. We don't think we die. We're just going to change addresses. Right. We move on. We pass on. So I never use the word die for me, but but I'm going to pass away. But everyone's going to leave this earth. Now we have to ask ourselves, what do we believe happens? Do we become worm food? We're going to come back as a horse because you fucked up in this life. I don't know who figures that out and who decides that. Or you come back at a prince because you you did good in this life. And I don't know what that standard of good is, but there's a standard. I don't know where they got it from. And I don't know who decides that. I mean, I asked all this stuff about Hinduism and Buddhism because I, when, when I was on my journey, uh, or is it Islam when, you know, Muhammad can change his mind about you in the, in, the, in the 11th hour, doesn't matter what, and you don't have the 72 virgins waiting for you and, and Muhammad. And so what happens? What do you believe? Now, for me, 
I believe I'm going to stand before that historical first century Jew. And, and, and I believe that that Bible is true. I do. Every, every word of it. I really, really do. So that's going to influence everything that leads up to that moment. For me, John, that's, that's right. And I look, man, I was selling drugs. I was getting in fights. I was angry at the world. I was pissed off at God. I cussed him out. I don't know how many times. And I, I didn't give a shit what anybody else thought. It was always me, 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 because I was so hurt. I couldn't get my brother back. I had guilt for my brother. Trust me, I've been through that road. I didn't go to some kumbaya, you know, sensitivity training, and now I'm a Christian because I went to a tent revival. Bullshit. I mean, I don't. I, I, I struggled. I toiled with this. I pushed back and forth. And I, some of the answers I didn't want to say, fuck that. I don't want that to be the answer. But it was the answer. And then I make decisions based off evidence. I look at evidence for a living, right? When I was DA, John, I literally made life and death decisions every week. In, in San Antonio, I mean, it's the sixth largest city in the country. I mean, you know, capital murders. And I, I was the final decision on death penalty cases. And, and I, I had to be open to evidence, not my, my feelings. I didn't, I didn't give a shit what my, I shelved my feelings. I got to look at objective evidence based off a standard. And that's what I would do. So I reason through evidence and I look at evidence and I really took on that, that perspective when I looked at different worldviews. So I just always have to push back at there's got to be a standard or else nothing matters and everybody can do whatever the hell they want to do. There, the fact that there may be a standard is different from whether or not we have access to that standard, correct? I don't understand that question. I'm like, sorry. well, I mean, you said you, you would see, like, obviously you think Muslims don't have a different standard than you would say you had a standard. Y yes, absolutely. Yes. So you, you would think that they don't actually have access to the proper standard. No, I mean, I, I can, I can talk about Allah and Muhammad and right. the, Hadith, the Sierra, the Quran and all that and how they were five, 600 years past Christ. And so, yeah. So Kumbha, I mean, we're, we're, moon God and all that stuff. We can talk about that at some other time. Yeah. So, but I mean, we obviously recognize that, not everyone is following the same standard if they do claim there is a standard. Oh, the, 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 the application, absolutely. But remember, okay. you never judge a worldview by its abuse. So, so mo a lot of people are pissed off at God and, 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 and walk away from Christianity because there's some shitty representatives out there. And, and, and or, so I don't look at that. I always encourage people, whether it's Islam or Hinduism or Buddhism or, or Christianity or any, whatever, don't judge the, the, the idea or, or the ideology or the worldview by its abuse because you got somebody abusing it. You judge it by its principles and what its, what its standards and what it professes and what it proclaims to be. I, I make that evidence analysis. If you have a shitty agent, big deal, you have a shitty agent, you know, a, a company would fire them, but you wouldn't shut down the business because you have a shitty agent, right? So I, I really got past that because I was, I experienced a lot of shitty Christians too, John. I mean, man, they just, Fake son of a bitches, bro. It just, it, it, it just drove me absolute batshit crazy. It drove me insane. They were checking off the boxes. They're putting on this show. And, and I, here's what I always tell people in politics and in ministry. You're not entitled to a secret life. You're entitled to a private life. I don't want to see you take a shit. And I don't want to see you make love to your wife. But, but, but you're not entitled to a secret life. You can't be doing and banging your secretary or, or watching kid porn, kitty porn, or living this bullshit you're snorting up in the, in the bathroom, being a hypocrite, whatever. That's a secret life. That's something that you wouldn't want anybody to find out. You want to keep it a secret. Christians and politicians aren't entitled to that, in my humble opinion. And I think the scripture is real clear about that. Screw the politicians, I mean Christians. But, but you are entitled to a private life, obviously. So that pissed me off, John. So I got it, man. I, that, that made me walk away. So, so you combine that mentality because I grew up under a denomination very similar to yours. And so, and so you know, there's a bunch of hypocrisy. This do as I say, not as I do. I can't stand that shit. Practice what you preach. How about preach what you practice? Why don't you practice it first before you open up your big ass mouth? And scripture says the same thing, by the way. And so you combine that hypocrisy that I dealt with and this rules without relationship well, it breeds rebellion, right, John? And so you combine that with the murder of my brother and why would a good God allow this shit to happen if he was so good? How could he do that? I thought we were good enough. And I was, I mean, you put that combination together, man, I was doing this to God immediately for years. And and I just tapped out, I'm speaking of jujitsu, my daughter's training, my kids. I mean, you know, and I do, uh, but, you know, I tapped out. I just, it was, I was miserable, brother. I, I, you know, cause, cause I'm chasing, I'm not living by a standard and I have nothing to give somebody and I was just miserable inside. I could not forgive the people that murdered my brother. I couldn't. I mean, and there was nothing I could do about it. Here was my problem. 
I sat in my front yard, John, for months with a gun, telling the devil, because mm. I believe the devil exists. I said, you know, fuck you, motherfucker. Come back when I'm ready for you. Sitting there, literally, locked and loaded. I mean, that's mis months like that. Miserable. And, and, and I'm competitive as hell, if you can't tell. I don't like to lose the checkers. <laughs> uh, you know, but, but you know, I'm not going to win this one. I'm not, Mike's not coming back. He, yep. I mean, I loaded his body myself. I felt the rigor mortis set in. I washed his blood off my driveway. I saw him in the, when he was embalmed. He ain't coming back on this side. But, and I didn't know what I believed. I, I was like, is, do I really believe in heaven? Am I really, am I ever going to see him again? Um, I mean, this all settled in. It questioned all of my thoughts of what I believed, even though I wasn't living it out, obviously. But of what I thought I believed, you know. So, like I said, John, I, mean, I just, my journey has been very unique in my humble opinion. And it really there, caused man. me to push back. I mean, I had some tough conversations with a lot of people of, of the Christian faith. Yeah, as I said, y'all are definitely, uh, from what I saw the podcast, y'all are definitely not afraid to have the, 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 diff the different conversations and the tough ones. Yeah. Um, you know, one, one of the things you, you mentioned, you brought up like this idea, like in one of your episodes was about pedophilia. And this kind of gets into this thing of one of the, one of the hangups I tend to have with religion and things like that is this idea of thoughts being immoral thoughts as sins, thoughts as wrong. Yeah. So, and what, a couple of times, not every time, a few times in the, in the podcast that I watched, you definitely separated the two. I, I said, I agree completely. Sexual activity with children is completely wrong. That's my opinion. And I, I share that opinion with a lot of people. Sure. That is the action. Anyone taking that action is committing an immoral act. I, I stop short of telling someone their thoughts are immoral. Because I don't see Why? a way, because I don't Why? see a way that a thought can be wrong. The only way, the only thing I see is if the thought were acted upon, if the thought were acted out or became reality, that would be wrong. And we can make that connection. But if we separate the two, the thought in and of itself, I don't see a way for that to be wrong. I'll tell you why. Um, if Matthew 5 in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus tells them all, Matthew 5 to 7 says, It has been said that it is, it is wrong to commit adultery. I tell you it is wrong to think adulterous. I'm like, fuck, that goes everybody there, right there. And it has been said that it is wrong to murder. I say to think murderously. Why? And, and think about the logic. And again, I, I pushed back on that. Why? Well, me knowing what I know now, because I've been involved in the, the, the social experiment called the justice system, because that's what it is. It's a social experiment. I see white people come in, go out. I see all the facts. I see the ugliest situations you can imagine, the total depravity of a society. I've seen it all, Daddy. But before you do something, what have you done before that? You, you've thought about it. You don't just do things on a whim. I mean, you can react to something, ha, and then you do that, and you slap somebody. Oh, shit, what did you scare the hell out of me for? But before you do something, you've thought it. And so that's why he's saying most people that don't do things on the, act on their thoughts, John, it's because they don't want to get caught, not because they don't want to do it. Because they're either going to get embarrassed, go to jail, go to prison, get called out, get caught, be exposed, whatever brought to life. Or, so that's, that's a wrong intent. Well, or, they recognize, or they recognize that if I did this, it would cause harm to someone. I don't want to cause harm to someone, therefore I don't do it. Well, now you're talking about toiling with an idea. That's that in and of itself. That is, see, no one says that just because it's wrong, you're going to go to hell for it. It's well, I'm not talking about going down. I'm just talking about it being wrong, period. I got it. But what I'm saying is the reason why the, the reason why Christ and the Christian worldviews holds the standard to the thoughts is because are, are people thinking of doing things? And then as soon as they get that opportunity, they do it. Well, 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 well we're, we're held to a standard. of It doesn't matter what situation. It doesn't matter if you have 10 naked ladies in front of you. You don't cheat on your wife. It doesn't care if you're in, a, in, in, in an island in Timbuktu and nobody's going to ever find out. Our idea is that God will know and that we're married in our marriage, in my marriage with my wife, God is the, Christ is the center of it. So I'm not just married to her. I've made a co covenant to him to treat her a certain way. And, you know, Ephesians 5 and 1 Peter 3 says, hey, dipshit, if you don't treat her the way I treated the church, I'm not even going to listen to you. So, I mean, I mean, marriage is really sacred in the eyes of God, as you know, Genesis 2 and Matthew 19 and all over the place. And so... I, I really, you take it deeper. The thoughts, God says the thoughts are wrong. Now, if you have the thoughts and you're struggling with it, 
And in your mind, you're saying, because it's going to cause harm to somebody. First of all, I, I can't get off the fact that why is causing harm to someone bad? But we'll, we'll shelf that for a little while. But, but you, you, that means you're toiling with it. You're struggling with it. So that's a good thing. You have a conscience. Well, how, why do you have a conscience? And what standard did you fill that conscience with? Those are just valid questions I think everybody has to answer. Well, like I said, you, you can... It's, it's easy, to me, it's, it comes off, it's easy to say that these, are, these thoughts are wrong because God is the standard. Mm-hmm. If we took God, I, I know it's going to, it's, you know, I know I realize you're a Christian. You have that Christian worldview. Okay. We can talk for a second. We have a thought experiment here. If, if yeah. you took God out of that, would that still be something? Would, would that still be wrong? I would say no. Okay. So would you act like if uh, you gave the example of cheating on your wife or something? Mm-hmm. If there, if, if you did not, hold to the fact that God, the thought, uh, the belief that God existed, would you cheat on your wife? I don't know because Christ is my life. I, I don't, I don't think I really don't. I mean, I mean, if I married my wife 20 years ago, can you, thing, I would can you think of, can you think of good, can you think of good reasons? Could you think, do you think there are good reasons to not cheat on someone if there is no God? And yes, I can think of a lot of good reasons, but I got to go okay. back to the source of why are those good reasons? I mean, again, I, I don't, I don't hang out in the surface. I got to go deeper because we say, hey, there's a lot of good reasons not to cheat on your wife. It would break her heart. Why? It would hurt her feelings. It would break a covenant. We'd probably divorce. We'd have to split up. Our kids would be going. All those are great reasons, but why are those great reasons? I mean, to me, I go, there's got to be a reason. What's the standard that makes those good reasons? Well, I think they're good reasons because you recognize that the results would have a negative impact on the lives of others. So it's a convenience standard then, well, because that man, I don't want to split custody with my with my ex wife, and then I got to pay her child support. Man, that's a pain in the ass. Screw it, I'm not going to cheat on her. Well, it's not, it sounds like like I say, why do we feel emotions? Well, emotions are not anything that occurs. Like, to why why do things hurt us? Like, why do things feel bad to us? Is that kind of what you're getting at? Like, why do things? No, I mean emotions are usually look. Uh, uh, Proverbs twenty three seven says, "As a man thinks in his heart, so he is." So our emotions are an expression of our worldview. Robert McGee wrote a great book, The Search for Significance, and he says that we all take in the world, right? Because we have experiences, we have opinions, and it goes through our thoughts, our, our, our worldview. It filters it. Those worldview sure. filters it, and, and it affects your worldview, affects your emotions. Uh, sure. You, like what used to piss me off and get me all pissed off in 20 years ago or 15 years ago doesn't do it today. Because my worldview has changed which affects my emotions. Now what after your emotions or your behavior? So your behavior is a dashboard and a reflection truly, not just your emotion, but what you really believe. Oh, I, I agree. I agree that beliefs definitely influence our actions. That's, mm-hmm. that's why I tend, that's why I want to hold true beliefs. Right. Because I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. So th- that, like I said, th- this idea, but this idea that if there is no God, this isn't wrong. That, that, yeah, then we're, really to, to me, to me, then we're not using, we're not calling, we're not saying something's wrong in the same way. We're not using the same word. Okay. Because like you said, you, you base, you saying something wrong means this is not what God wants. Me saying right. something's wrong means this would cause harm to someone. But why does it care? Why, why does it matter if you cause harm to somebody? Because I care. Okay. Good for you. But Johnny yeah. doesn't care. If Freddie doesn't care. Then, then it's then it's not really wrong. So if Freddie can, it's, hurt it's, love, you don't want to hurt Freddie's loved one, but Freddie wants to hurt your loved one. You well, can't. Freddie really doesn't. Yeah, Fr- Freddie doesn't think it's wrong. So then you can't get mad at Freddie. Well, no, I I, I can get mad because it's my personal opinion that it's wrong. Okay. I can still get mad. Well, that, that my point is, then it gets back to survival of the fittest. So if Freddie's pissing you off because he wants to hurt your loved one, and you're like, "Hey, motherfucker, don't hurt my loved one. I don't give a shit about you. I want to do it." Then you're gonna say, "If you're stronger than Freddie, then you're gonna stop him." It goes and back to we, that jungle mentality. Right. And then we all get together and we go, "Hey, guys, there's these people running around that don't care about hurting each other, hurting people. Um, what do y'all think about this?" And we all kind of go, "Yeah." People, and if those twenty, I'm sorry, John. Yeah, and if those ahead. twenty people say, and they all give you a different standard, different than yours, different than Freddie's, okay. now what do you do? Now you're really fucked. Well, right. If we if we all complete, if we all say, well, I don't know what to do about this. I don't have any problem with them doing it. And then you know, that, and you know what's going to happen to that society very quickly? Royal Rumble, baby. It'll cease to exist because like exactly. And since God's a God of order, and He wanted us to be fruitful and multiply because He does because He designed us all. That goes back again. That goes to that deeper that that eth, that ethos, right? That understanding, that that logos, this this law that goes out there, this mindset that gives us our standards moving forward. But I. I can't, I guess I come back to, I can't, I don't know a mechanism. 
let me just say, I don't know a method to tell the difference between a group of people who all seem to pretty much agree that we all want to stay, stay alive. You know, we don't want, we don't want each other killing each other. You know, we don't want that going on. I don't know a way to tell the difference between a group of people that all just kind of agreed we like being alive versus a God implanting this idea in us. Well, it's kind of inherent in us. Like, you know, scripture says that he planted his word in our hearts. Well, right? as I said, I don't know a way to tell the difference between those two. Well, I mean, look, even if we have a purely atheist society, most people get upset about murder. Most people get upset about theft. Most people get upset about sexual assault. Most on that one. Most people get upset about dishonoring father and mother. I mean, if, if, if you know, if someone said F you, you fucking C word to their mom, I would even the atheist pop would be like, hey, man, don't talk to your mom like that. Why? What does it matter? Because I said so. Who made you? Who made you in charge? I'm in charge of you. Says who? Screw you, pop back. I mean, it just there's disorder, right? There's everybody's making up their own shit. I mean, so coveting somebody, you wouldn't want someone around you that's always trying to want to get it one over on you because they're jealous of you. They want your spouse. They want your money. They want your podcast. They want your talents. They want whatever it is. Coveting somebody that that's wrong under God. Well, I could I could separate myself from that person and just not be associated with them. But again, okay, that's fine. And that's a choice. That's a personal choice. You're right. But what I'm saying as a societal standard, we all agree you're separating yourself from them because you're, you're telling yourself that's wrong. I don't want that around me. Well, that's not what I, that's not what personally, in my opinion, I like to surround okay. myself with. Again, it goes back to what I said earlier. It's like the fact that we all pretty much agree on some things, but we don't agree on others. Like, I mean, right. some people think, uh, some people think sex work is immoral. What's some that people, one? Some people think sex work is immoral, like prostitution. Sex work? Or, right. Oh, prostitution. Uh, yeah, some people think work. that. I'm yeah. sorry, brother. I didn't hear you. Some sex people work. think that's immoral. So, uh, some people don't. Some people think okay. that drugs are, uh, you know, drugs are immoral. Some people don't. Some people think marijuana is immoral. Some people don't. So, but, you know, the fact that but we every all. every Christian are, should think, every Christian should think that prostitution is wrong. Biblically. Okay, no, well, that's what I said, yeah. I'm just saying. That, that's fine, yeah, that's because you're getting into a specific doctrine there, and that's right. that's different than right. what I'm talking about. With So to, to me, that goes back to, that's no more that's no more compelling to me. That doesn't really stand out to me as as amazing. Right. The fact that we all kind of agree that, us, that things like, you know, violating someone's consent is wrong or violating, you know, or hurting someone unnecessarily is wrong. Any more than when we go to the grocery store, we find, you know, the same pe people. We so said we don't we don't have 30,000 types of, uh, you know, we don't have we don't have cat feces next to the tomatoes because no one wants to eat cat feces. Mm -hmm. we, we, we Grocery stores sort of cater to this idea self, that that's a selfish standard, though, right? Because I don't want to eat it because we don't want to eat. It. I don't give a shit about anybody else. I don't want to eat cat shit. So well, we've all so kind of got together. Right. We've all kind of got together and decided, hey, you know, should we put cat shit next to the tomatoes? Well, <laughs> no, because that's not really going to sell. And if anybody well, yeah, really truly, that's what I'm if anybody truly, well, if anybody truly wants to to eat cat turds, w when we start getting the demand for it, I'm sure there would be. Uh, would I, you agree? I, I, zero doubt. I, zero, okay. I agree with you. <laughs> so if yeah, if everybody was telling Walmart, hey, we see these tomatoes, but we really like some cat turds next to it, that'd be great. Yeah. That's when Walmart will start carrying. I guarantee you, they'd have it there the next day if enough people wanted it. So it's it, it it's a reflect. Our society is a reflection of where we agree, mm -hmm. and that's so. That's not really a. It's not really a very amazing thing to me that it's like, oh man, this this must be from some supernatural I, I source. Don't think, I don't think it's a smoking gun. It's 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 one of the things that I think everybody has to answer, though. I mean, you know, even this kind of this this well, because uh, 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 I mean, as a Christian, we're saying here's the standard. The Bible says it. It's logical because it even affects someone who it was an atheist worldview it affects them it's universal because the, the manufacturer of all of us put that in our hearts and he understands what order needed to run a society and to truly be fruitful and multiply so there's not cannibalism and people you know taking advantage of each other and running like a damn royal Rome. well it's, it's, I, I think i think the design argument is strong i mean for an intelligent designer maybe not the god of the bible we just have to figure out who fits that role but i, I like i said john i always start with intelligent design versus a random mutation through natural selection. That's for me. When I have a conversation with people, because look, if you don't believe in a designer and that designer is the God of the Bible, then who gives a shit about Jesus in the, in the Bible, right? He's just another guy. Um, so I always start with a designer, a design argument, and then I try to fill in the blank on who is that designer. 
well, who claims to be that designer. Not a lot of worldviews claim to be a designer. They don't. Hindu and Buddhists just believe in this nirvana and over and over and every birth is a rebirth and they go back and forth and it's all kind of always been there without really, I've never heard a good explanation of who decides that, what standard is there. And really the, the Buddhist is trying to lose pleasure, right? They're trying to, to, to lose the drive of pleasure. And God says, I want you to have pleasure. I'm going to give you the confines of what to have it in, whether it's sex or anything else. God designed it. He thinks it's beautiful. It's good. Have at it, but just in the confines of my design. And there's a lot of logical reasons for that. So I, I just, I just, like I said, in my journey, I just got a little deeper on all these worldviews. Uh, and and I wasn't, cause I wasn't sure to be honest with you. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know what I believed. It had never been tested before, you know? And mm -hmm. after my brother was murdered, it, it definitely got tested. I, I assure you that. Oh, no doubt. That's, that's, I don't envy you that one bit. I don't think many people would. That's probably one of the hardest things I've ever heard somebody having to go through. Probably short of losing a child. That's probably one of the yeah, hardest things. I was things just going to say that now that I'm a dad. Yeah. Have, yeah. I have to say that, brother. Do you have yeah, kids? I, I do. I have, I have five. So come on, God, look at you, man. What are you? <laughs> damn. You listening to the Bible, be fruitful and multiply Buy a TV. That was, that was, that was one of the things you just said. Like that kind of caught my attention. The brief, be fruitful and multiply thing. Yeah. To me, that sounds like natural selection to me. That wow. sounds like the exact mechanism because natural selection selects for the species that live long enough to reproduce. But I, mean, I here's here's a question that I have for everybody that believes in evolution. So you believe that the bacteria under this iPad, the amoeba, the swordfish, the great the great white shark, the hummingbird, the giraffe, the hippopotamus, the human being, the silverback gorilla, every animal, dog, and all the different felines and and birds and all the everything the plants and the trees and everything came from a single cell organism not simultaneously well i know that yeah i got that yeah. i mean the, the incredible complexity i mean the giraffe digestive system is forget about it the hummingbird the wings and the peacock feathers the way the eye works i mean all the different digestive a sperm and an egg and then here comes us with the spinal cord and all the nerves and the three billion different dna the, the connections i mean it I, I just think, I think you guys have more faith than I do, to be honest with you. And I say that respectfully. That's a lot to believe in. I mean, I don't care how many billions. I mean, we, you and I both believe in a 4.3 billion year old Earth. I mean, I, it, and then Cambrian explosion, you know, and what is it over that 10 million year period, like 84 percent of, the, of the, 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 the skeletal types appeared out of nowhere without, you know, the pre-Cambrian explosion. I mean, era, they looked at that and they couldn't see a precursor to this. I mean, it really just exploded out of nowhere. It sounded a lot like Genesis and that. And so, I, I, again, I, I went through all that. And, and you'd have a wonderful conversation with George if we could ever get him on the show. My buddy, he is a scholar, scholar, and just a neat guy. Oh, I'd, I'd love to have him on sometime, too. That'd be oh, great. I think, you, I, think you'd really, I think you'd really enjoy it, John. I really yeah. do. Like I said, I, I, said I, I am probably one of the most underqualified people to talk about biology and evolution, things like that. Well, you're, you're qualified to ask questions like, Oh yeah. I mean, and that's, I, I, I said, I, that's what that's, I typically, when things like that, I just refer to the consensus, the scientific yeah. consensus in that, because those are the people well, I mean, that. But but we, and you'll have an interesting conversation with them on the scientific consensus. There's, there's, you know, we used to, we used to trade, we used to um, teach intelligent design as an option in school and they don't anymore. Well, and there's, and a, it, it there's a reason. Presented. To let people decide on their own, and well, you know, there's a reason they, they took that to court, and they, you know, yeah, they, and, and it was it was it was represented horribly. That was a shitty representation on that deal. Um, we, we maybe should you do should another, do it. Then. We should do another show on that, John. I maybe you should really bring have, that. Maybe you should bring that case then. Yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah, you, you one that. more thing to do, brother. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you you could bring that case. It was done before. It can be done again. Yeah. <laughs> but no, uh, so yeah, this uh. What was the the uh, the other episode I saw was and again I'm going to get into a topic that I don't even I'm not really even qualified to talk about. It's okay. But the this idea of of gender fluidity. Mm -hmm. Real quick, tell me how you see that because I get the feeling that it might not be you might not be getting all the information from what I watched. I get the feeling you're not you might not be understanding a couple of the nuanced things with it. Well, gender, maybe I'm not, and you can explain it all you want, but I, I think- well, I, I don't know if I can. I'm probably going to be really bad at it, but I just wanted to kind of hear well, your- Well, okay. Your I mean, look, I mean, it was always, I mean, this is something very recent for us, right? I mean, the gender dysphoria was a condition in our in our medical books for the longest time. 
no, no different than anorexia. And so my issue with, with, with transgender issues, I mean, I, like I said, I said on the show, there was a, a, I had a hairdresser, Amber, who was, she considered herself a transvestite and she was going through the sex change. And I love the hell out of her, man. She's so cool and cut my hair for years. And I, I still think a lot of her. And, you know, but this, but transgenderism is something very recent, relatively recent to where, you know, right now I identify with a male and I, I in two minutes I'm upset and I, I'm not saying you have to be upset, but I, it's fluid. It kind of goes day by day or moment by is, moment. Real quick though, is, is it recent or is it this just now we're actually, people are actually able to talk about it without fear of being completely, I mean, you it, know, it's never it, it, ripped to shreds by at, society. Yeah. I mean, you look at, I mean, remember the homosexuality has been uh, obviously since the Greek times, that's, that's nothing new. Um, transgender, I'm sorry, transvestite or cross-dressing or sex changes. That's been, that's been around for a while, but this, this, this transgenderism where they're trying to make, how many different genders are there now? I mean, from oh, a biblical know. worldview, there's, there's male and female. God made male and female vaginas and, 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 and penises and, you know, XX or XY. I mean, the, the, our, our, our DNA is our DNA. And right, so that's, that's where, issue, that's where we're getting, right. that, that's where I think we're missing. Like one is, one is labeled the sex of someone, mm -hmm. which is your chromosomes, you know, and for most people, genitalia, what, whatever you're born with. When they speak about gender, it's more of a, what I feel like. What my, I, I, what, what my, that's new. I'm saying is well, if you look at applications, sex, male, female, gender than male female if you're filling out a, a doctor's application in the old days what gender is your child when your birth certificate as you know five times well it's a new it's a new idea that's being recognized by more people that doesn't mean it's this that it just it just started people have been feeling well, this way for a long time probably well well maybe maybe not i just have to see the evidence yeah. of it that's all. right and, and and even if they have okay again from a from a biblically minded person scripture is clear and and i think biology shows that male female now someone's feelings i think we should be compassionate towards i think we should talk about we should address but that doesn't mean that we change the standard for a society in my humble opinion and so and my, my idea was this and it's the same type of feeling i mean you get uh the, the young lady that comes up to us like a little girl where let's say we're having lunch john and she says and we look at her and she's just skin and bones you know she's anorexic and we say hey, honey sit down we're gonna buy you some food oh no 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 i'm 100 pounds overweight i, I need to lose more weight and if you, um, you and I, we would not say, you know what, you're right. Forget about it. Don't eat. We would intervene and we would try to save her because your, your standard of harm, it's causing her harm. And so, because that's a, that's a body dysphoria. She's not overweight. There's people that have a dysphoria that they're amputees. Um, I always, before this pedophilia movement, I said, well, what, what do you do when the person says, hey, you know, Mr. DA, I know you're upset with me. I know I had sex with that 13 year old and I'm 50. But, you know, in my mind, I identified with a, with a 14 year old. So but that's an this. action they've taken. You're but talking still, about an action it, they've taken. Uh, but I, I get this, but there's actions and all this stuff that we're talking about. Right? Well, there's not really an action in, in someone that, that typically would have been viewed as female that we would, that you and I would probably see and probably think they were female. Well, later we find out that say, oh no, I identify as male. There's well, no there's, harm there's an in that. action if we're talking about bathrooms. There's an action if we're talking about employment. There's an action if we're talking about sex education in school and what we're teaching our kids. So there's action. So now whether you, agree, I mean, you're entitled. What to is have it? A, I don't know that. that. I, I don't know that it has anything to do with sex education. Well, there, I, I don't know if you, well, at least in Texas, I mean, they're being taught about anything from all different types of sex and it's all the same and marriage and transgender and all. I mean, the, things are being taught to kids these days. Yeah, that's why a lot of people are. Well, they're, they're, are they ta are they taught that? I mean, they're taught that these people exist. No, they're taught that it's the same. Are you married, John? Yes. Okay. So I don't know if you do or don't. I don't know if you want your five kids to be taught that, that you know, ma all marriage is the same and that your marriage to your wife is the same as anybody else being married and transgender is norm yeah. normal for your kids. And whether you believe a nine-year-old should say, you know what, I identify with a female that they have. No, no, we're, no we're talking about consenting adults. We're not talking about, like, letting nine-year-olds get married to adults. But, but, the, but oh, I, I know that, brother, but I'm saying on the identification part in Australia, the, the, a court system said that a, a, was it seven or nine? George knows. And so I don't want to misspeak, brother. So I'm going to just tell you, I don't know for sure. But that the, the parents couldn't stop them and they started doing the hormone and, and to, a, to, a, to a child. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, let them become an adult. And it, like to your point, 
if they're an adult and they want to do that, then that's they have free. Well, yeah, we we can talk about issues with you know parental rights and all that stuff like that and how far that extends. But as far as we're, we're talking about talking about the, the legal implications, you said with like sex education and they're teaching but that, children. But that's something. one of them too, though, brother. That's one of them too. What, what are they teaching say. children that is? What they're teaching children, but then also a child deciding on on their gender early on, and then them taking hormones and having you know surgeries and things of this nature. I'm I'm just saying that every state's a little different, but those are some of the implications. Well, the the, sco the schools aren't teaching them to have a surgery. They're teaching them that that these kind of these kind of concepts are out there. That these are the things that these are these are these are the labels that some people are using. They're not. I don't. I don't think there's any uh there's any instances of schools teaching people to go get surgeries no brother no they're, they're not that i know of i mean I'm, not, okay. I'm just saying those are some of the implications when you talk about the implicit effects those are things that maybe don't happen now but down the road they could happen all i'm saying is is this is the movement as a, that that's what well, people have an issue with that's well i'm i'm as far as that goes, I, I can't really, I can't say that I'd, I'd be opposed to something just because someone might take it to an extreme. Like I'm not opposed to freedom of speech just because someone might take it to extreme and go out and, you know, have a Ku Klux Klan parade or something, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say, Oh, I, I don't like that. So we better get rid of this freedom of speech thing. I agree with you. And I'm not, that's not what I'm saying either. I'm talking about a standard that's being pushed. We have to ask ourselves, is there a standard? And what do we want that standard to be? And what benefit when you said your harm analysis that you that you kind of use, what harm could it have eventually? That's all I'm saying. I mean, what, what you believe is what you believe. But from a biblical worldview, any person that has a biblical worldview from the Christian worldview believes in male and female and believes in, in, in marriage with a certain prescription. And that's it. I mean, there's not, you know, the, the, the transgender feelings are not taught. Now, that doesn't mean that you treat the transgender ugly. I have friends that identify as transgender and none of them will tell you that I don't love them. I have friends that are gay or that, that, that live out the gay lifestyle. None of them will tell you that I don't love them. So they, your, they, your, your friends, them. your friends that are transgender, do you, do you, uh, do you identify them as like, as their preferred pronoun? I, 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 what they asked me to do, I, I call them what they want. Yes. See that's, and honestly, that's really but, all but, that's but, being but, asked but for the government to make me do it. That's where I have a problem. I don't see that happening though. Brother, it's happened. Jordan Peterson dealt with that in Canada. Yes, that's moving. I mean, when you're talking about all these different genders, it sees these, you know, all the different choices out there. It, it there's a there's a push. That, yeah, there really is. So, well, like I said I would. But I me would personally, just, right. me personally, I mean, I, 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 they're my friend. I'm gonna respect what they, what they, what they want. And I, I commend you for that, honestly, because I think that's further than a lot of than a lot of people who hold the beliefs that this shouldn't be happening would do well they know my beliefs but right but, but i but I, I love see i don't i love them i don't i mean i i'm i'm of the belief and i think the christian worldview is consistent about this our behavior is not us i, I was arrested for selling drugs i'm not still a drug dealer but some people want to argue i'm a drug dealer blah 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 well i mean i sold drugs in that season of my life uh, i'm not a victim uh, i was victimized i'm not a victim when my brother was murdered um, my, my son is on the spectrum of autism and so, uh, you know, what, what am I, do I, I'm just a special needs dad. And that's my, no, my identity is I'm a child of God. I'm a husband, I'm a daddy. And I happen to do whatever my profession is and the hobbies that I have, excuse me. But, but my behavior in my different life, in my season doesn't dictate who I am. My behavior is a reflection of what I believe, but it's not who I am. That's a good, I, I, because I, I did a review of a, are you familiar with Ray Comfort? You know, you know who I that am is. I am Ray Comfort. Yeah, Ray, I, Ray's a little corny, but I, I did. Him. I did a review. I did a review of one of his videos, and uh, in, in one of the things he always does, and he does this other videos too, is he'll ask somebody, "Have you ever told a lie? Yeah, you know, you're have you ever told something? Yeah, blah, 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 blah. what you do if you die today? What are you gonna go to hell? Right. I like, so I like you just said that. You kind of you, you disagree with him there. It's kind of like just because well, I, well, I have told I mean, a lot of them to be a liar. I think he's right. I just, I mean, I, I, I don't agree with the approach. And, and it's fine. Look, Ray, look, Ray's a passionate guy. I believe he loves the Lord. I, he has a wonderful heart. From what I've seen, I don't know him personally. I just, that's not my approach. Ray Comfort would not approve of our rated Christianity. How about that? Oh, yeah. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> when, you, when you said that, it just, it just it reminded me of, of, of what Ray does with that. And I was like, <clears throat> excuse me. I was like, that's perfect because we got a guy here who says, like, you know, just because I told a lie doesn't mean I'm a liar. Just because yeah. I did this doesn't mean that's who I but am. What, so what, I, I like what, that. Ray, what Ray misses in that, John, what Ray misses in that 
is if you told a lie and you're unrepentant of it. But we're really good at labeling and, and receiving labels. Well, if you steal one time, you're a, you're 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 a thief, right? If you lie one time, you're a liar. If you cheat one time, you're a cheater. I mean, and, and society's good at labeling people like that. And what what the Christian world do says, I'm all that shit and probably worse because I was I, I wanted to do worse and more, and you didn't even know half the shit I did in the mind of of the of the, of the person that's falling away from Christ. But in Christ. Um, I, I have a new, I have, I have this wonderful gift and I'm washed clean and, and I have this gift of salvation because Christ went through hell and was unrecognizable historically. That first century Jew was literally torn apart by the Romans. They didn't follow the Jewish traditions of 39 lashings. They tore him up. Some scholars believe his organs were exposed. I mean, brutal, brutal. He never changed his story once, never took it back once. None of the apostles that were all murdered except for John. They all died and well, Judas committed suicide. But I mean, but, but John, I mean, all of them, every single one of them, none of them turned their, none of them changed their story. Paul, who used to be Saul of Tarsus, who was murdering Christians. The fuck did he turn around for? If Jesus already had been killed. He should have been happy as shit, making, you know, going and doing his victory lap. Something happened to him, man. He wrote almost two thirds of the New Testament. James, the half brother of Jesus, James the Just. Um, he's got a tr tremendous book in, 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 the, in the New Testament. I mean, he didn't even believe his own half-brother was, was the Messiah. I mean, Scripture talks about it. Play it out, John. It's like, oh, fuck, man. That's my brother, Yeshua, man. Yeah, he thinks he's the Messiah. Just ignore him. Hey, Yeshua, how's it going, bro? Hey, okay, I'll see you later. Well, then this guy goes off and starts one of the, he's one of the church leaders and ends up being martyred for it as well. So, I mean, you, you got to ask yourself, okay, what? what? No one's going to die for a lie. They might die for a lie they didn't know was a lie. But no one's going to die for a lie that they know is a lie, that they know it. I, and, and that's not, I've never seen it in any other circumstance. And you have all these people that never changed the story and they all died for something. And you just have to ask yourself why. I mean, so again, I'm sorry about that. That's all part of my questions I asked as I was journeying through this, you know, this yeah. very R rated road to Christ. Oh, absolutely. That's great. I mean, uh, like I said, I love some of the things you said. We disagree, obviously, on some points. Sure, brother. But I, but I think we agree on a lot more points than we disagree on. So Amen, it's, man. It's great. Um, yeah. So, uh, if it is there anything else you want to get into, we can get into. It. We got we got a little more time left. So yeah, let's let's get into a little more things. If you got more Whatever time, Whatever you want, brother. I'm, I'm on your time, man. Oh, well, great. So I, I don't want to keep you too long. I know we're running. We always run a little bit late. I tend to uh, stream later at night than most people do. Mm, just because okay. of my work hours i'm usually up at this time anyway so but yeah so uh let's see I, i'm gonna i'm gonna pull your uh your channel up here real quick and share it on the screen sure. and we can just i'm just gonna let everybody know this is uh this is your uh youtube channel obviously y'all are on facebook oh, too thank you brother yeah i've got the uh links in the description there lots of videos to go look at i encourage like i said if you're atheist and you're watching this i encourage you to, to watch christian apologetics because I encourage you to know what the arguments are. I encourage you to know what the evidence they're presenting is. And I encourage you to know what you're going to, if you, if you plan on having conversations with Christians, you know, don't look like an idiot. And conversely, I think Nico would say the same. If you're a Christian, you're going to talk to atheists. Ugh. No, you know, you, you would probably say the same. Go look at what's I'm being, hard on you know. Christians, brother. Yeah. I'm hard on Christians. I'm hard. I'm actually hard on atheists too. I'm actually harder on atheists. It is harder what, to be you know an what atheist I on my channel. People, John, and I always do the same thing myself. I never go into a conversation thinking I can't learn something or that I can't oh, yeah. adjust my thinking to something that is true. Truth is is one of my goals. It happens to be one of God's characters. I told you one of the three characters, the main characters. But I just always encourage people to. Go in there with an open mind, make your arguments, make your just be able to answer the why, not a bunch of sound bites, you know, kind of hash it out. You don't have to have all the answers. Be open to coming back to a conversation, but also be open to adjusting. I mean, right, if there's a truth, because yeah. I mean, it, this is a really important stuff, in my humble opinion, it's, especially because, you know, we're all we're all leaving this earth at some point. And I, and I just not that I don't want to believe I just I just couldn't believe that that my. God willing, I have 90 years. I'm 47. I want another 40 years or so, 40 a couple of years. But if, if, if the Lord allows me 90 years on this side, you know, I can't, I don't, I don't believe that my 90 years are just those 90 years and 4.3 billion years of an earth or whatever, 4.5, 3.8, whatever it is. And, and so what does that mean when you really break that up into the, to the, the math? Fuck, I mean, that's nothing with all these, why, what does it mean? They're just, 
you know, there's, there's something more, there's a purpose, there's a hunger for me because I, I truly believe that, that, that I'm going to stand before that first century Jew, John. And so that's really dictated all my life. And, and maybe my, you know, I think a lot of my boldness comes from my personality just in the flesh. I was used to be arrogant. I was a fighter. I used to compete in martial arts and, and, but then going through what I went through, I'm just not, I'm, I'm not living for the approval of any man. I, I, I want to be at peace with men in truth and in, in respect as a martial artist, but also as a Christian, more importantly. But I, I truly live to please the Lord, which dictates my private life. And I don't have a secret life, but my private life, whether I'm in public or not, I mean, it dictates everything that I do, whether I'm in front of a podcast or a podium or a pulpit or in front of one person in my office and I'm counseling uh, legally or in personally or spiritually. So that to, to me, it's, it was really on this this kind of quest. If it's a word, maybe quest is not a good word. I don't know. Quest for deeper purpose. Like, why the fuck? Why am I here? What, what, what is life about? I don't understand this. You know, you know, my you know, life hit me like a ton of bricks. You know, so that's all. So I just encourage people. I appreciate your your whole demeanor. Um, your demeanor is wonderful, John. I, Thank I, you. I, and just to let your audience know, I talk about a walk of faith. I didn't know what I was walking into. And you know that. I mean, oh, yeah. We just communicated a couple, like literally two or three times over Facebook. I, I didn't have, and I didn't mean this in a disrespectful way. I just have four kids and, and craziness. I didn't, and like John said, I didn't, have, I only had two or three days. I didn't research. And so I, I could have walked into a shit storm, which is fine. I'm just <laughs> Oh, I, I, a very respectful conversation, which I really enjoyed. You do. I definitely appreciate you coming on. You definitely just were like, yeah, no problem. You had nothing, no idea. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know me from Adam or anything. So you're yeah. like, yeah, sure. Whatever. Didn't know if I'm uh, Christian, atheist, Buddhist, Hindu, I no whatever. I, I think so, I asked you what yeah. I asked you before we got on. Like, right on. Right before we came, right before we went live, you minutes, asked me and I told you. You told me you were atheist. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's great. Like I said, I love having these conversations and I love having conversations with people that I'm, I'm definitely not going to agree with. Cause I, I, I don't want to sit here for an hour and a half and go back and forth and just, yep, uh huh, yep, I agree. Next thing, I agree with that too. So, but yeah, so we've we mentioned so many topics tonight, mentioned so many things, and we could, I could probably, out of the thousand, out of a thousand things, I could probably find a thousand topics we could dive into and do a whole show on. Amen. So I would, I would love to have you back and uh, with, with your buddy George too. I'd love to have y'all yeah. on, maybe bring some other people on and we can, you know, have some Christians, some atheists talking about things. Sure. And uh, I'll probably chew them out more than I would y'all guys because <laughs> I, I I actually hate the bad atheist arguments more than I do the bad Christian arguments. Yeah, you know, and I, I feel the same way. I, I guess I, my, my whole point is that there, there is a truth. Whatever oh, it yes. is. Whether the truth is that atheist, atheism is true or, or it can't be agnosticism, it's either one or the other, but atheism is true or Christianity or Hindu or Buddhist, like I said, or Islam but there, there's a truth out there and it's not this kind of, well, let's get a little bit of everything. Well, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But what does the evidence show us? And so I'm really big on evidence. And just so you'll know, George is a chemist. He's a scientist by trade. So he's used to looking at experiments and what, what are results from an experiment. And I'm looking at evidence in a, in a court of law. And he looks so you got the, the trial lawyer and the, and, the, and the chemist, you know, the scientist. So George will rock your world on all the science. You'll, I think you'll really enjoy your conversation with George. I mean, when you talk about, I mean, that guy's nuts. I mean, you might want him on by yourself because just, you know, I, I just turn him loose and you guys, and then maybe we'll do another one with the panel or something, but yeah, I'll definitely I'd, talk to him and I can give you okay. my cell number so you can communicate, you know, through texting or calling me instead right. of always through the messenger and okay. we'll try to set these things up. Absolutely. Yeah. That, the, the whole, uh, the whole idea behind this, behind this show and the, the, most of the topics I deal with, I'm looking for a method to obviously we're all looking for that method to discern truth from, from fiction. Right. We're looking for a way to decipher the two. So when I, when I talk to theists, when I talk to Christians and other people who, who say there's a God, like you said, there's only one way or the other. It's either a God or no God. One has to be true. I don't, I don't even know that we can ever get to that answer. And I'm trying to find a method. If people say they, they have this answer, I haven't, even figured, I haven't even really been given a reliable method of getting that answer, but, and I really haven't been given a reliable method of actually people who say they can show why, why their answer is true. Well, then you, but you have to have a reason why 
the Christian answer is not true then, right? Because there's got to no. be some standard to say somebody's wrong. Well, uh, I don't have to say you're wrong. and it, I don't necessarily have to say your idea is false. I can just say that you haven't given me good reason to think it's true. Well, but you are saying that, and I know you're doing it very respectfully, but you're saying no. that because you're saying there's no God, and I'm saying there is. So it's not like there maybe is a God. You're saying there's no God. I'm not saying there. I'm I'm not saying there is no God. Because I, like I said, I, I clarified that a little bit earlier. I'm not saying there is no God. I'm saying I do not believe there's. I don't see reason to believe there's a God. Okay. I also believe there is no God based on prior based on prior data, mm. in a sense, because in a sense of we've everything we've ever seen has never been demonstrated to be God. So everything we've ever, every, every cause for everything that is we've ever found a cause for has never been God. So the, 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 the rational inference is, will the next thing we find, will the next cause be God? Well, inference tells us the likelihood is very slim because it never has been before. So I, I, I don't know if I followed it quite what you were saying exactly, but what, if there's no right, I mean, so there's, so there's got to be a stand. That's why I, that's why I always go back to the standard, not the. Well, let me, let me give you kind of an analogy. Let me give kind of an analogy, and it's if, if we if we're driving down the street and we see greenhouse, 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 greenhouse for three miles, and then we say what's the, and then we just stop. We say what's what's the next house going to be? Now, if we say that that house will be green. Then that's that's a fallacy. That's the that's the black swan fallacy. Mm -hmm. If we say that I believe the next house will be green, that's not fallacious. That's actually you're exercising rationality through inference and induction, mm -hmm. because the prior data has given us good reason to think that I we're not making what you're saying right. We're not making a blanket statement that the next house will be green. We're saying we have good reason to believe the next house will be green. Would you agree? Okay. In your example, I, I, I follow your rationale. Yeah. So I, I'm not, so this is me. I'm, this is, I'm going to this in the sense that I'm not saying there is no God or that the next cause we find will not be God. I'm going to this in a sense that I'm saying that so far the causes we have found have not been God. So it's through inference and induction, it is most likely that the next cause we find will not be God. See, and I'm th and I'm saying, yeah, I think what you just said proves there is because if you want to talk about inference and deduction again, you talk about the complexity, you talk about the Big Bang theory, everything from nothing. I mean, the Big well, Bang these are theory, things. These are things we haven't found. We haven't. We don't claim to know the cause for yet. But you, you, I'm talking about everything from nothing. Remember, you know, because Dr. Hubble and Dr. Einstein, they, they they saw through the Hubble telescope, they see that the universe is expanding, so they they. Ex extrapolated back to a finite period of time that's how they have the age of the universe of 14 plus you know 0.35 right. whatever billion years old and so they know at some point space time and matter ceased to exist there was no space time and matter there was nothing literally nothing remember before hubble and einstein there was the theory that well the cosmos just always existed what do you mean they always existed yeah they were eternal okay but you have a problem with an eternal heaven and an eternal god but okay that's fine i'll, I'll take it for now but then they get this Big Bang Theory. Every Christian should have had a spiritual heart on when that happened because that sounds like Genesis 1 in the beginning, ex nihilo in the Hebrew, from nothing. There was, any, there, was a, there was a creation from nothing, a Big Bang. And then they started expanding and things happened from there, at least from the universe standpoint, right? So, I mean, I, I, think, I think it fits right into Genesis 1. Now science had to catch up to the Bible. The Bible didn't catch up to science. Well, uh I would say that that saying it sounds like the Big Bang, that what you see in Genesis sounds like the Big Bang, that falls under a post hoc rationalization. That's uh, what I. That's okay. because you can say. I this, mean, I, all I'm saying is you got you got the the gen, Genesis for thousands of years is saying in the beginning God created. They talk about the shape of the earth. They talk about the the, the rotation of the of, of, of the of the of the the earth around the sun. I mean, they, there's no way they would have known these things. But but so. Constantly. Well, that's, oh, that's, they talk about, about they talk about earth. Hold itself. on, they talk about earth around the sun. Yeah, I'll get you the scripture. I'll, 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 because that's that was definitely not agreed upon. It was they were wrong. But I, again, this is the mishandling of it. You don't you don't judge a worldview by its abuse, brother. There has been some dumb ass Christians over the years that have done horrible things. 
But again, that, that, that's not reflection on Christ. That's a reflection on human beings and the fallen nature. You know, that Romans 3, that all men have fallen short of our sinful and fallen short of the glory of God. I mean, we know what human beings do when they're left to their own demise. Mao in China, like I said earlier, Stalin in Russia, Lenin, you know, Hitler. I mean, we know it. When you leave men and you take God out of it and get him out of a job with that standard, then you make up your own shit and then it's survival of the fittest. Well, I, I think and we've we seen know it. I think we've seen what can happen when people who who will abuse their power get power. But because there's oh, nothing to anchor them down, I agree. There's well, nothing. I, I don't think that's. Down. I don't think that's indicative of what everyone. We, we know that's not indicative of what everyone would do if they have power. Well, because people one, have had power and not done that. Give me one person that's done that that hasn't done that. People who have had power and not abused it, or not mm -hmm. killed people. You, I'm saying, yeah, people. whatever. Not abused their power. It doesn't have to be extremists to kill them, but just that doesn't abuse their power. Well, I, I said I don't know what they've done specifically. Oh. I, I would, I would say you're saying that this leads to like genocide, things like that. I mean, well, I mean, those are the extreme examples. All I'm saying is, without a moral compass to anchor someone down, human beings, then they give authority and power. They're going to screw it up because they're wrapped in this shit called flesh. That's why the moral compass and the anchoring matters. That's all I'm saying. I, I think that's more of a, a demonstration that one person having all the power isn't a good idea. Why? If it's a moral person, what does it matter? But as, as we get into morality, that being that that's moral to you or moral to me. And that's exactly right. So my point is, this is my point. Your concern is because there's no moral standard. And, and, and if, if these people are being given power, they're going to abuse it because they're not answering to it. Remember, think about it. Well, they, they could. They don't, they're, not, they're, not, they're not always going to. Well, I mean, every example that I've seen, I mean, uh, very. Well, there's, a, there's a lot of things I could do, but I don't do them. Well, there's got to be a reason why you don't. There's got to be there's got to be something anchoring you down. And the idea of a transcendent God that no matter when, when, no matter what happens on Earth or how big and badass someone thinks they're on Earth, that there's going to be an answering to later that anchors someone down. I mean, ideologically, that's what the Christian ideology advocates, that it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're King David that horny bastard that committed murder to, to, to cover up adultery, or Solomon, or Saul, or any of these people, excuse me, that abused their power. Were they what were they anchored down to and what did they get off the reservation from? And David, as you know, repented, and he was a man after God's own heart. So that shows the grace of God, that even someone that committed murder to cover up adultery, since he truly repented, he was spared. I mean, so uh, there's just so much there that we really get deep in when we start dissecting and peeling the onion back that I think is very relevant. Because look, here's the test for, for truth in, in my home. Is it logically consistent? Is it empirically adequate? Is there evidence for it? Is it experientially relevant? Does it make sense in your life or is it just a theory that will never play out in our lives? And you and I have been having a wonderful conversation about stuff that we agree on because this stuff plays out in our lives. So that, that's the last one. I believe that there's a lot of empirical evidence to the Christian worldview, and we can have multiple shows to talk about right. it. And, it's, and, and I believe that the Christian worldview is the only worldview that's logically consistent. So on those three standards of truth, for anybody, not just for Christians, I think that the Christian worldview, at least in my journey and my walk, I believe that it fulfills all three of them. I don't, I don't know your, your position on as far as the omnis and things like that, but as far as logical consistency go, it would go, I could... I could probably find some areas where I can push back on that, but like you said, we, we could do. The fact that you have to think about it so hard is, is a good sign. And there, and there might, and I say this respectfully, there might be a misunderstanding. There were many times in my walk, John, where I was pissed off. I said, bullshit, what about this? And it wasn't that I was right. I was truly ignorant to the city. And then when I was, when I found out the truth, it was like, oh shit. It was, people call it revelation. I call it the oh shit moment. You know, like, oh crap. I didn't realize I was wrong about this. And I just had this, this miss perception all those years happened many times well, see, I, I had the same thing but the other way in my, in my <laughs> it opinion. sounds like it i got it brother but yeah. it sounds like you had some crappy people around you man i'd really like to talk to you offline sometimes. no it was actually it was actually mostly just me <laughs> okay, but I, I mean it, this wasn't this wasn't anything that anybody i really talked to anybody about it was kind of just one of the things like i did on my own is I your wife a christian no uh, she doesn't really identify as an atheist, but we don't we we don't go to church. We don't raise our children Christian or anything like that. So, okay. I, I, if I had to guess, I would say she would probably say she was an atheist, but I don't speak Got for it. her. So, and she, she she she's not like me. She's on the internet, you know, arguing with theists all day or anything. So, <laughs> no, she's a uh, 
she has her hobbies. I have mine, but cool. obviously, but yes, I, I would I would probably guess that she would probably say she was an atheist if pushed okay. on the issue. But no, as, as far as uh, like I guess I could probably I, I have to think about more, but I would probably say like discerning truth from. And there's another there's another YouTuber I watch, and he's got a great. Uh, it's like he's like, how do we figure out what's different from what's imaginary from what's real? How do we tell the difference? And that's why I kind of earlier we talked about thoughts. You know, well, that th those th those three those three areas of truth, right? Logically consistent, empirical, adequate, and experientially relevant. I mean, that's I mean, if you have a dream, that's a dream. I mean, if you have an experience because you've touched something and you can consciously ex experience it and explain it to someone else and recall it, and there's proof of it, whatever proof you want, whether it's video, audio, memory, whatever, eyewitnesses. I mean, there's there's a lot of people because we deal with that in the, in the justice system. And it's called delusional. There's people that are delusional if they're you know bipolar or they're schizophrenic. Well, that's not what they're not reality. Their delusion is reality to them and causes them to do some things that are that are not very good for a society. But it's not reality to them. Someone's whispering in my ear and telling me to kill John. What are you talking about? The devil did what? And they act on it. Well, that's where there's really danger involved, right? Those type of right. instabilities. So, I mean, I, I think I think those three tests of truth uh, uh, answer that question, in my humble opinion. Yeah, so, so, someone experiencing something wouldn't necessarily be wouldn't be. Uh, it's something. I'm sorry. Let me see if I can lost my thought there. Okay. You, but you agree the action is what we'd have to worry about, not the actual. As far as well, as far as what we're, we're determining what's true and what's not true, someone having a delusion, we can we can use empiricism, we can use an independent verification to determine whether that's true or not. Well, think about what you just said, though. So, if I told you that I was a six foot five, seventy year old Asian woman, what would you tell me? Well, I could say we could. I would say we could get a couple people together, and we could measure you. Okay, so I, I'm then, telling you I'm 5'10", but I know you can't tell. Right. So I'm not 6'5". So if you measured me, so what if I told you I'm six foot five Asian woman? What would you tell me? I would probably say that I, if, if I know you're 5'10", I would say, well, we can we can hash that out. As far as you being Asian, uh, what do you mean by that? Do you mean you were born in Asia? Is that what you're saying? Like I'm Asian. I'm an, I'm an Asian female. Okay. Well, you say well, as far as you're being Asian, we can go to your birth certificate and say, well, you never been you you were not born in asia and as far as we can tell you never been to asia well, i can be born so, in asia and not be asian as, as an ethnicity i'm right. talking about if i was if i if i told you i was a six foot five 70 year old seven right, we could go then we could go to your we could go to your parents and we could do, go to your genealogy and we could say well none of your relatives have ever lived in asia or you know anything like that as far as you being a woman that's we've had that conversation earlier i'd say if that's how you feel that's what you're, you're saying now if you're saying that I have different chromosomes I, I, I than promi I. I promise you, I don't have a vagina. Well, okay, then that's something we could. That's something that, with your consent, we could look at, and then we could determine. You know what I'm saying? Well, what would you that's, tell me? You would tell me I have a suspension of reality. That's my point. Well, after after we gather the evidence, I would present you with that evidence, and I would say what you're saying contradicts the evidence that we've gathered. And that's all I'm saying about the other topics we were talking about. But how do we, now? Now, if you want, now if you want to switch definitions, then we're gonna we're in a whole different ballgame about definitions. About what? Well, definitions. Like, well, what is Asian? I mean, if you're a half percent Asian, are you Asian? Are you this? We, did you ever visit Asia? So now well, you're identifying no, well, with we Asia. Could, we could make. Oh, Nico, you do martial arts, so you've done an Asian martial arts. So you're no, Asian, I can ask you. you oh, that's what I say. I can ask you. I would ask you what you what you're saying as Asian. What do you think qualifies as Asian? Then we but could go into that. Think about how much trouble you had when I asked you about my age. What about my age? Well, I, I want to check. I want to. I want to collect Social Security. I'm 65. Right, so we go to your birth certificate, and we go obviously. I'm forty-seven, the, but what am I? I'm sixty-five, and I want you to treat me like I'm sixty-five, and I want my Social Security check. <laughs> so we'd have to go to your birth. It was like, well, can you deliver? Okay, us well, after you did that, you can you give us evidence that you're sixty-five? Can you give us evidence? You're paying me my Social Security. Can you give us evidence that you're sixty-five? Nope. Then, but I then, identify as sixty-five, and I want you to treat me like I'm sixty-five. Well, if you identify like you're sixty-five, I can. Uh, I can treat you like you're 65. That doesn't mean that the government has, has to be as treated. That's exactly my point. So with the standard you, that's your personal deal. But I'm not going to collect Social Security. And, and, and nobody would do that to me. But, okay. but the standard that we're setting, this is why I, I was trying Are we going to back to the transgender issue? Earlier. Is that about the transgender issue kind of too? Is that well, what you're saying? It, it, that also, yeah. The fluidity and all this identification. When, because you identify with something. I, I used to identify as a drug dealer. Okay. 
I used to identify as an angry son of a bitch because I was victimized and my brother was murdered. Okay. I mean, what do you identify as? Is, is Our feelings shouldn't dictate things. Reality should, you, which you talked about earlier, with, whether something was real or not. Okay. I, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with an objective standard of reality. I think the, the transgender issue mainly gets down to, like, and you, you already do this, so you recognize that people being people being addressed how they want to be addressed, treating people how you would want to be treated. That's the crux I, that's of that That's a biblical standard, by the way. But, but, but what I'm saying is, is forcing all of society to do that. That's where the problem comes I don't. Th I don't think that's a realistic goal, and I don't think anyone really thinks that's a realistic goal. I don't no, think anyone's. I don't think anybody's really saying we want to make everyone do this or put them in jail. Well, I'm, I'm not. I didn't say anything about jail, but but yes, I mean. Well, as, as far as making a legal mandate. Oh, uh, brother, I'm telling you, there's consequences to it. I mean, from a societal push to saying this. All I'm saying is, brother, as I believe in an objective standard. Now we can talk about what's the what's the foundation or what's the the, the of that standard of why I believe what I believe. But but truth should matter, and so. We have to ask ourselves, you know, with this postmodernist ideology of, hey, your truth is not my truth. What's good for you is not good for me. Hey, there is no truth. Well, well, whether I like it or not, whatever I feel or identify about gravity, when I drop this, guess what? That happens. Well, I don't feel it doesn't matter. Gravity is gravity. Truth behind gravity. It doesn't care about Nico's feelings. Doesn't care about John's feelings. If you say, hey, but I don't think I'm going to fall off that building if I jump. I think I'm, if your kid said, hey, pop, I think I'm Superman. I'm going to go fly. You wouldn't let him do it. But you're, you ta you're no talking sir. about, okay, you're talking about something that happens independent of our existence even. But Gra I'm, gravity I'm just happens. talking about a truth, a, 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 our feelings determining what truth is versus objectivity to telling us what truth is. Well, That's all the, I'm saying. The truth my is, kids said, the but, truth is that we have feelings. I'm not saying that, brother. I'm right. saying when you're using your feelings to determine truth. If any yes, one of our kids, you're five or four. That's a bad method. Four, what, babe? That's a bad method. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Because if my kids, they're, they're kids. I'm Superman. Oh, I'm a superhero. I can fly. Okay, uh, son. It, I'm not letting them jump off a building. But I feel like I can fly. I don't care what you feel like. You cannot fly, by the way. No, but I can feel, I identify that I can fly. You can't fly. I can fly. Okay, fly. And well, I mean, so all I'm saying is, is reality and truth have to matter. That's all I'm saying. And then Absolutely. we can talk about, as we've done, you know where that truth comes from and that standard comes from but but that's it and this and this is why i see it as an evolutionary benefit that's kind of where i got earlier is I, I think that things like the idea is that we need to gather we need to have true beliefs because they help us live longer so we were able to why, reproduce why does that more. matter who wants who cares if you live longer or not? because that, because the species propagates faster if more beings who live longer live to the age of, you live to the age of being able to reproduce. Well, if you cares? die before you can matter? reproduce, the species but, dies. But if we're going to turn into worm food, I'm just going to get all I can. And as we say, get mine. Oh, yeah, we're now, now, we're, now we're talking about, now we're talking about the why, the meaning behind it. I'm just talking well, about the fact. Uh, yeah, I think know? we always do because you can't, you can't claim a fact without a reasoning behind it. That's all I'm saying. No, there, there are, there's there, there are, motivation or purpose no, behind something. there are things that there are things in philosophy called brute facts, things that just are. Okay. And there may be a why, but we don't necessarily have a why. And it's not necessary for the, you know, the, 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 the I think therefore I am is there's, there's no why to it. Well, if I, if I think I'm not, I, I don't identify as a, a piece of well, shit. Well, no, that's, 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 not the, that's not the same. That's, that's the difference. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm misunderstanding. Yeah. Me. I'm just, I guess my, my, my main point behind this, this little section of discussion is truth matters. That's yeah, all. Like I agree. Objective truth, not subjective truth. Objective truth should matter. That's all. Okay. Um, yeah. So when you say objective, does see, I, I get hung up on this and I make the mistake most of the time because I okay. think somebody objective means. Meaning, meaning gravity, uh, you know, the, the, the fact that I'm not six foot five, the fact that I'm not 65. That's an objective truth. Whether I like it or not, doesn't matter what I identify with. Uh, the, the girl that comes up to us that's anorexic, I'm 200 pounds, I shouldn't eat. No, you're not. You're two pounds. And you well, yeah, but you're talking, about, you're talking about like numbers and things that we invented. No, I'm just so, talking about objective truth. Right. Like, so Let me see right now. Do you, are, are you, a, are you a, a guy that's black? No. 
You're not. That's an objective. So, that, that's an objective. Right. But we, you're, but you're we, but well. that's that. That relies on you and I both agreeing on what black means, right? Well, that's my point. That's this subjective, okay. relative truth. That's where that's but dangerous, once, my man. Once we agree on the on the definitions, then we can say something's objective, objective, but the true truth, or not true. No, no. Then you're saying that we come up with the object. Then it's not objective. Because if you and I that, have to agree on something that statement that's, wasn't contrary, that's contrary to evidence and it's subjective. Well, to me, he's kind of black. My definition of black, it's like someone saying, hey, do you eat healthy, John? Well, what do you mean by healthy? Yes, exactly. Are you a good, are you a good husband? Define good. Exactly. You know? Okay. Yes. Well, that's not, well, that's not, that's subjective. That's not okay. objective. That, that I but think I'm that talking I, about objective. Well, there are things that are, are objectively true. Are like, you 500 pounds? Once again, we're talking about numbers. We're talking about the word pounds. I'm just saying that are you 500 pounds? Under our, because I know that we agree on what those words mean already. No, it doesn't matter whether we agree. It, it's irrelevant. Our agreement it, is irrelevant. If you ask anybody in this world, it's no. not crazy. You are. Two it's absolutely two, relevant. That equals six. Based on what we and I both know, what two means. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's no, it, it's, okay, think right. about it. Think about it. Who invented the word two? I mean, if we're going to do that, then we're all screwed, my man. I mean, because no, because uh, your kids aren't your kids, then guess what? Your kids aren't your kids. I'm going to go to Florida and take your kids from you. How does that follow, though? Because they're not your kids. Define them as your kids. I'm going to okay. come take your kids. They're my kids. Well, no, I, I have records showing that my, me and my that wife are matter. married. It, and it, it, doesn't we, matter. We agree on that. So it's not objective. We're not well, agreeing on it. Yeah, it was, uh, we, but luckily, I live in a society where we've gotten together and decided that you can't do that. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling your leg a little bit. I know. I'm trying to make my point, brother. Yeah, but that's objective think, facts. There's I get, objective I, facts. I will agree there are some things that are objective, but they have to be independent of, of us. I, I, I'm, that's like, my point. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. If humans never existed, then two and pounds and things like that also don't exist those are labels that we gave to things yeah no brother but still i mean you you can't fly that's an objective truth okay it's it's objective you cannot in the independently sense, fly you right cannot if, I, if i'm the if i'm the only like i said if i'm the only person if i'm the only mind in the in the world in the universe and i think i can fly that is objectively a false belief. I you agree. Yeah. Because you're right. What I'm saying is, what if someone else believes I can fly? Then you better not let them be behind you near a building. Right, but it's, it's but, it, but they subjectively believe that I can. I, I know. And if they act on that subjectivity, they're going to shove you off a building and right. you're going to die. So what, what, but what, what I got to earlier, though, is that I think, of like, like you mentioned gravity. Yeah, you know, the, the the fact that things fall to the ground, that would happen whether humans ex human minds or any mind at all existed or not. I agree, hundred percent. That's an that's, objective truth. That's objective. Yes, the fact that that happening now, calling it gravity, that's something we came up with. That's a that, definition. That's not right. The truth. Exactly. Your, exactly. Okay. But I'm exactly. not talking. I'm talking about objective truth. That, that's right. The truth. And if the only way we can rocks, get there. Uh, what? Right. The only way we can get there is like like we have conversations. The only way we can get there is because we agree on the terms. Do you believe that if I put gasoline on you and light you on fire, that you will not burn? That I, I will not burn? Do not I believe burn. that I will not burn? No. That's right, because that's an objective truth. Gasoline fire on the human skin burns you and can kill you. That's okay. that's an objective truth, whether you like it or not. Well, I, I believe I'm fireproof. Well, then you got a problem because if right, you burn, you, you're going to get... Do you agree that the only reason we're able to call those objective is because we agree on the terms beforehand? Nope. Nope. It doesn't matter if we agree. Because if, if you don't, if you think you're fireproof, then we're not agreeing. You're still going to burn. If I think you're not fireproof and you think you're fireproof, you're still going to burn. No, no. We're, but we're, we're still agreeing on the terms there. We don't have to agree on them, though. We just, we're, we're, we're logical men. That's why. We're, right. Well, the, 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 fact, the, the fact that I will, the, the fact that I will burn is independent from what I believe about it. I, I, that's not so, my argument. That's yours. I, right. That's exactly what I'm saying. Right. Truth so is an independent. Hold on. Truth is independent to our feelings and what we believe. That's the, what I've been saying this whole time. That's exactly what I've been saying this whole time. Right. So when you make a statement that the, the true, the statement that I'm seven foot tall or something like that, the, the, the statement I'm seven foot tall, that's contingent on us agreeing on what's on what seven foot is and what seven feet equals. That's you contingent on the whole metric system. Then? No, no, I'm not. Oh, I don't. I don't. But that's what that's what that's the nuance I'm getting to, though, is 
man, I think yes, tomato, well, tomato well, on that deal. I mean, right. I well, we, well, I, I'm, I'm, when I'm talking about objective truth, I'm not playing with the words. Right. I'm saying there's an objective truth, gravity, flying, burning, height, you know, skin color. Now you can say, oh, but what's the definition of black? Okay, now we're just really, I don't know, man. I think that gets a little funny. You know, you know, there's objective truth, bro. That's all I'm saying. Right. Well, once do you, we do you have ten kids, no, you right. have five kids. Once we uh, so truth. once we agree on what these on what we're saying, then we can say yes, objectively by this by these definitions, objectively that's not, that's not that's true. That's not by definition. That's not objective. Re look up the definition, brother. So then, what, so then, would you say would you say you an don't unmarried have to agree on it is my point? Right. Would you say an unmarried bachelor is logically consistent? No. Can't okay. Be unmarried bachelor. Why? Because you're talking about definitions. You have two completely exactly. objective definitions. Uh, listen, hold on. You have two objective definitions. Well, definitions aren't objective. Definitions are agreed upon. No, 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 no. no. But based off what? I, well, what's the definition of black? Based off the, the black skin color and your white skin color are completely different. Right, because we, we have a collective, we, we have a predominantly collective agreement on what that word means. Based that, off that doesn't, an objective That fact. doesn't make it objective. That doesn't make the that doesn't make what, the label yeah, objective. Let me ask you this then. The definition. You, 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 you agree I'll meet you where you're at. What's you your agree definition words change, of objective? Right? What's your definition of objective? Something so, independent of any mind. I agree with you. But without I mind, we don't get definitions. Give me an example of objective truth for you, then, so I can make sure. Well, I like, like I just said, that the like you mentioned gravity. Like I said, I, we wouldn't have the word gravity or anything like that. We wouldn't have the mouth sound that make that says gravity, but we would have the force that things fall like a leaf would fall from a tree and it would go to the ground. That okay. would still happen. That happens objectively. The, the, the rock, the rock on the freaking top of the grand Canyon will exist whether or not any, any mind exists. Agreed. That's objective. A volcano explodes is objective, right? That, that happens okay. independent of whether a mind exists. If you're standing on top of it and you say, no, it's not going to go. It's gonna go, boom, and then you're in trouble, right? That's but, an but objective I, truth. Right. Doesn't matter what but you I'm think. A, I'm agree. I'm agreeing with you in a sense earlier because once we agree on the definitions, mm -hmm. once mm -hmm. we once we both understand what each other is talking about, then we can then then we can both say yes, that is objectively true. Once we understand what the truth is, then we understand objectivity has not has as you know your definition. I think is good, brother. Objectivity has nothing to do with our feelings or what we have to agree on. Well, in order to in order to communicate a, a concept, yes, it does. That's a different issue. Communicating a concept so I can understand the truth, yes, but it doesn't change the truth. Well, then how are you how are you perceiving any? How are you perceiving objective truth through communication? Then, well, that that's you're being able to explain it to me, but that doesn't change the truth. That doesn't change the truth. Right? You okay. Say, yes. You say, so, Nico, don't walk in there. You're not fireproof, and you're trying to explain that I'm not fireproof. Proof. I need to understand your explanation exactly. so I don't die. But whether you explain it to me or not, I'm not fireproof. So okay. your explanation just saves me from dying. It doesn't save me the fact that I'm not fireproof. Right. So the, the, the fact that you understand what I'm saying is what's going to save me from dying. It doesn't exactly. Save, it, it doesn't make me fireproof or not. Because once we've agreed on the definitions, now we can look at it objectively. No, brother. I'm, I'm still not fireproof. My point in that example is your right. explanation to me saves my ass. It doesn't okay. change the fact that I'm not fireproof. Well, okay. What I'm saying is, I, th I think we're talking past it a little bit. Okay. What I'm saying is the fact that I'm able to tell you, I'm able to communicate to you that you're not fireproof. Saves me. You are able to process that information and realize we are using the same definitions, the same concepts, and I'm able to relay the information to you. You're able to take in that information and put it through your brain and you realize, wait, this will cause me harm if I do this. But let's say I don't, let's say I don't get it. Am I fireproof? Let's say I don't, I don't understand you for whatever reason. I'm so you don't, you just say, you don't, what, what do you think fireproof means? What brother, it doesn't matter what it means. I mean, we both have the same definition. Of obviously, fireproof, no, obviously, obviously if you, if, if you don't so want fireproof, to fireproof to me is if I walk into a, a furnace, that I will not be burned. Okay. I can walk in there and pretend like I'm in a shower and, and, and come back out and not have one burn on my hair, no skin, I'm not dead, I'm nothing. That's okay. fireproof. Okay, so... I'm not fireproof. You know right. That, right. Okay. All right, and if I say you are or something like that, we're both using that term the same way. 
But whether you explain it to me and I, and I comprehend it is irrelevant to me being fireproof. I'm still not fireproof. You're right. The fact Whether, whether the, I understand what you're explaining to me or not. Yes. The, the fact that that will happen, that, yes, is that, is, that is independent. I agree. Right. Okay. But when we're talking, we're saying. talking about when we're talking about those. I think we got, you know, we, we definitely went off a wormhole there. But <laughs> I think, because uh, I, I, I think where we started was my point was when we're talking about things that the facts of the universe, things that happen independent of what we think, versus there can be truth that happens dependent on what we think. I think mm -hmm. I think there's I think there are things that are objectively true that have a subjective. Uh, ontology that now that is logically inconsistent if i there's okay if, effect. there's if i have effect to our understanding but truth is truth well if i have a thought now say i i have a thought that i'm superman or whatever you know okay. i'm not actually that's a subjective thought right the it is objectively true that i am having that thought No, it's not. Oh, you're, is it reality that you're having that thought? Yes, but it's not true. The, right. It, but it's a, the thought is true, but not that I'm experiencing. That right. It is objectively you're, you're true mixing, that I'm experiencing I mean, that thought. Yeah. The thought is true for you. It's still a false thought, though. You're not Superman. You're not bulletproof and you can't fly. Right. I have a false belief. I, I have a belief exactly that is false. It's a false. I have a belief, belief that is false, but it's objectively true that I am having that belief. You are objectively having a false belief, but it still doesn't change the truth that you're not Superman. Right. But the thought is subjective. Your thought is subjective. It's false subjective. The objective truth is that you're not Superman. Right. But it's also objectively true that I'm having that thought. The thought, but not that yes. you're Superman. Right. You're not so Superman. That, that's, the point that's, was that you're not Superman, not whether you were having the thought or not. Right. But that's, that's what I'm getting to, though. We're talking about things that occur in our minds, things that occur independent of other people things that don't have any effect on other people okay so the the object the, the this idea of objective truth doesn't really matter mm. because it's are, there, are your kids your kids or are they my kids well that's that's something that happens in the, outside of my brain that see i'm maybe i'm just not understanding your definition but I'm, I'm to me objective truth is you're not superman you're not bulletproof you're not fireproof you cannot fly right you have five kids. You don't have ten. You're not seven foot eight. Lord. You're not a black guy. Those kids are you and your wife's kids. They're not me and my wife's kids. So I have no rights to them. You, you understand my point? Right. But we go back to that those idea. Are objective this. truth. Doesn't matter about your feelings or mine on them. Even if you said I don't want those kids, they're still your kids. Right. But we go back to this. But we go back to the idea, like the whole the trans issue, where people feel a certain way. This is something that's happening in their brain. This is something that happens internally. Mm -hmm. It is objectively true that they feel this way. Okay. So I guess my question would be, they're not trying, it's, it's not like they're saying we're going to dictate what, what other people do or what other people must do based on how I feel. It's, this is how I feel. I would like to be treated this way. No, but that's not the push, though, brother. It's it's you need to treat me this way. Well, I mean, look, I mean, like, like, look at this. I mean, let, let me give you the most. I mean, I don't know if you know we've been going two hours. I, I just want to make sure you know the time. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm still good. I'm just yeah, for your, your good, listeners dude. and your length of your deal. I'll give you the deal. Um, I, I I'm I'm involved in fighting and training my kids, and I've I've been in for years. And I am not for a quote unquote trans man to fight my daughters after a certain age i'm just not because the big the big deal and even joe rogan went ape shit on this he's like look man i saw that fight there was an mma fighter it was a biological male with all the testosterone and strength or whatever that identified as a female and beat the living shit out of this female fractured her yeah, I, don't, I don't know the answer to all that yeah i, I, I admit that's yeah i admit i don't have the answer for that I, I, and I appreciate that. All yeah. I'm saying is this is the ultimate. Again, I'm looking at the result of these ideologies. And that's one I of don't many. Think, that's all. I don't think we have, I, I, like I said earlier, I really don't think we have to, we, we have to throw everything out because of what might happen. No, but that's not my, what it happened. And, and okay. I mean, in, te in Texas, a male, a, 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 you know, a biological male won the female state wrestling championship. 
and, and, I'm, not, and I'm not saying I'm not saying we would look back. Someone, at, I don't know if you have daughters right. and cheated a biological female out of whoever was going to win, going to win. Well, I'm not saying we won't look back at that one day and go, we we, we were we were too uh, presumptuous there. We found a better way later or something like that. Well, I, truth I, is the best way. Truth. I mean, just well, compete with your, you know. Yeah. Right. But I mean, even through history, we we. We do things. We look back and we go, "Yeah, we shouldn't have done that. That was but, but we, we, we screwed up." There, we screwed let's, that not, up. let's avoid having to go back and correct it, right? That's all I'm saying. Well, like I said, as, as far as the and you've already said you do this already anyway, so it's not even a big issue. But you you, you oh, address yeah. people how they want to be. If, yeah, individual. Like if you were, and I'm not being disrespectful. If you were trans and you asked me, "Hey, Nico, we're we're, we're acquaintances. We're going to be friends, blah, blah, blah. I'd like you to address me this way. I'd say, sure, John, I will. If I'm, if you're going to be in my life, I'm going to respect you. And maybe, maybe it's my ignorance of the, of the issue. Like I said, I have, like I said this before, I am probably the worst person to speak on it. I brought it up just because of the, you know, we okay. wanted to, I want to tie it <laughs> into your really podcast. Down a rabbit hole yeah. Time, so, I mean, no, it's, I, I brought it up just because it tied into, you know, your, your podcast and everything, things mm-hmm. y'all talk about. I wanted to kind of touch on those things, but the, the only idea I get about it is that people want to be, People want to be treated how they want to be treated. And uh, to me, I, I, that's why it seems like a non-issue for me is if someone wants to be called a certain thing, I'll call them that. And if, and, and I've, I'll prob- I'll probably that's individual choice. I'm just saying like yeah. when it comes to MMA fights and, 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 and women Olympics and female Olympics and things of this nature. Yeah. I don't, I don't, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't plan to have, slope, I don't brother, that's that. all. Yeah, there and there may and I will, I will say this: there may be a push to do too much too fast. Hmm. In some circles, I'm not saying at all. I'm not saying that everyone is pushing for it as complete overhaul right away. There might be hmm. some that are. I don't know, but definitely we should be measured about it. But like I said, I I would I would probably have different objections to it from your worldview than I would. Mm-hmm. Well, but, I just think that, that I think I hope people see how we modeled. Two people that can come together with different ideologies and have a very oh, yeah. respectful and cordial and hopefully meaningful and productive conversation. I think we need more conversations like this and not get into sound bites and name calling and trying to shut people off. Just talk. Oh yeah. People gotta get angry. Just talk. I mean, yes, there's serious implications to this stuff. I got it, but quit thinking that people are calling your baby ugly and let's just talk. <laughs> let's reason together, which is a biblical concept. But I mean, let's just sit down and reason together. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. Nico, I think you said you pointed out to me, and I typically don't go over two hours, but you were so entertaining and so engaging, <laughs> and uh, I, I, I lost track of time. Channel. I did. I lost track of time. Oh, it was, it was sorry, such guys. a great conversation. No, it was great. Likewise. I was having such a great conversation. I lost track of time. But you know what? I'm so glad. I'm so thankful you were here. So thankful you let us go so long with you. And it's I'm honored. 11 at night on a Sunday night. I mean, you're staying up late with me. I couldn't, I couldn't be more appreciative, and I agree. I love these conversations and I hope you come back and yes, bring, sir. bring uh, people with you. And uh, you have an open invitation as far as I'm concerned. You, anytime, and I'll, I'll, I'll message you my cell number yeah. in a little while before I hit the hay. Okay. Okay. Anytime we have, if you see, I'm about to uh, do a, do a stream or anything and you feel like it's a topic you want to jump in on, you have an open invitation. So you, please let me know. Thank you very much, John. I'm honored. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you, brother. Have a great night. Thank you so much. You too. Thank you. Yes, sir.